All right, good evening and welcome to the August 19th meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals here at Falmouth Town Hall. Uh, calling the meeting to order and ask everyone to please silence their cell phones. I'll introduce the board at this time. At my far right, your far left, is James Morris, who is a full voting member. Uh, to my immediate right is Scott Zielinski, who is the vice chair. My name is TJ Hurry. I'm the chair of the board. To my left is Bob Dugan, who is the board's clerk. Also with us tonight is Noreen Stockman, who is the zoning administrator, and Ashley DeMello, who is the recording secretary for the night. The Zoning Board of Appeals is charged with applying the zoning bylaws for the town, and we consider requests on special permits, variances, and appeals as provided in the bylaws, which have been approved by town meeting and the Attorney General's Office for the Commonwealth. All decisions the board makes are made through the public hearing process. The board's goal is to hear testimony from the applicant from the public and also to allow a full and fair discussion of the project prior to rendering a decision. To be in each hearing, the clerk will read the public announcement of the hearing and then present any pertinent information from the file, such as referrals from town departments and summarizing correspondences to the board. The applicant or the applicant's representative will then have 15 minutes to make a presentation and time may be extended by vote of the board. The board will then question the applicant and the public will be invited to comment as well. Uh, public comments should be directed only at the project itself. We ask you to please refrain from making any personal or derogatory statements. Public comment can include an opinion in favor, in opposition, or it might just simply be a question about the nature of the project. The chair will limit discussion in the interest of time in the event that comments become repetitive. All members of the public wishing to speak should wait to be recognized by the chair and you should come to the podium to your left here and state your name and address for the record. And we typically limit public comment to two minutes per person. Uh, the board will then either close or continue the hearing. When the board is satisfied that enough information has been presented by testimony and in the file to make a decision, by motion and vote of the board, the hearing will be closed. And the alternative, we may continue the hearing to a future date and time certain. After the hearing is closed, no more testimony may be taken. And as for board discussion and decisions, the board may then further discuss the project among ourselves and we would make a motion to deny or approve uh, that would be made and voted upon. The motion will include a summary of key findings and conditions. An affirmative vote of four members, which is a supermajority, is required for approvals of motions on special permits, variances, and appeals. A split vote, such as a three to two vote, would be a failure to carry and would result in denial of the project. Under Massachusetts general law, if a special permit is denied, the applicant cannot return to the board for two years unless the project is substantially different. So turning to our agenda for the night, we do have public comment, followed by two continuations, three new public hearings, and we do have a few items on our open meeting list as well. Uh, so first up for the night is public comment. This public comment period is meant for anything not on the agenda. Uh, so if anyone is out there with anything to say for something that is not on the agenda, you can be recognized at this time. Anyone out there? All right, seeing none, moving right ahead to our continuations. Up first, we have application 41-21 O'Reilly, 14 Montgomery Ave in Falmouth, requesting a special permit to raise and rebuild the non-conforming detached garage and dwelling. So Mr. Chairman, we do have a request for a continuance um, from applicant's counsel. Uh, it says, as was noted in our last correspondence, the applicants have been speaking with an abutter and his representative in an attempt to address some of his stated concerns, many of which were set forth in the correspondence from attorney Dalmas. The applicants continue to look at a potential ways of accomplishing this, and the dialogue between the parties continues, though we are not there yet. As such, the O'Reillys would like to request a continuance on the special permit hearing scheduled for this evening. Uh, uh, Kevin said he'd also forward a copy of the email to Attorney Dalmas as well. And he says, please let me know if this is possible and what the continued hearing date would be. We would, of course, be willing to sign a waiver as the opening of the hearing. Do not hesitate to let me know if there's any questions. So um, I will make a motion uh, to accept a continuation of this item to October 7th, 2021, which is our next available date. Second. All right, so motion to continue hearing 41-21 O'Reilly, 14 Montgomery Avenue, Falmouth. Uh, motion was made by Bob, second by Scott. 
All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so that's continued to October 7th. Yeah, and then Ms. Clower, just before you leave, you can yeah. sign the extension. Thank you. All right, up next we have application 61-20, Echo Land Development, LLC, Zero Percival Road, Lot 4 and T-Ticket, requesting a comprehensive permit to construct 16 single-family dwellings. Four dwellings will be affordable. And mm -hmm. And Mr. Chairman, I have a lot to read uh, into the record on this, so right. let me start with that first before we hear from the applicant. Uh, so first we have something from, um, this was actually to Edwin Montero from Brad Holmes of ECR Environmental Consulting and Restoration LLC. It says, per your request regarding off Percival Road, the Environmental Consulting and Restoration LLC performed a review of the existing conditions at the property located at Off Percival Road in Falmouth, the site, on February 26, 2021. The purpose of the review was to identify wetland resource areas on or near the site. The site consists of a forested, undeveloped lot located along the southwest side of Percival Road. The site is bordered by single-family homes to the south and west and Percival Road to the east and north. The site is stable and dominated by native upland vegetation, including pitch pine, white oak, American beech, American holly, black huckleberry, uh, bracken fern, etc. Hand augering to observe soil conditions at the site was conducted to confirm the presence of bright non hydric soils with colors ranging from 10 year uh, 4 slash 3 to 10 year 5 slash 8 Munsell color chart. During the site review, ECR did not find vegetative wetland resource areas on or near the site. As a result of ECR's site review and review of all available online databases, ECR is able to confirm that the site and within 100 feet of the site does not contain wetland resource areas as defined by the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and or Town of Falmouth Wetland Bylaw. Also review of the MassGIS wetlands database reveals the following. The site is not located within estimated or priority habitats of rare species according to the Massachusetts National Heritage and Endangered Species Program. The site does not contain certified or potential vernal pools according to Mass NHECP. The site does not contain USGS map streams. The site is not located within an area mapped as land subject to flooding for the FEMA flood regs. The site is not located within an area of critical environmental concern. As a result of ECR's site review, ECR is able to confirm that the site does not contain wetland resource areas or buffer zones as defined in the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and its implementing regulations found at 310 CMR 10.0 or Town of Falmouth Wetlands Bylaw. Upon review of this site review memo, please contact me with any questions or requests for additional information. And that's signed Brad Holmes, Professional Wetland Scientist, number 1464, uh, manager at ECR. LLC. Uh, this letter was received from a Heidi Ingram. Um, I am in a butter of the aforementioned plan to build 40B construction. My address is 16 Trotting Lane T Ticket. I have resided there for 24 years and have owned property for over half that time. My concern with this construction of the 40B residential area is the area of the proposed site is already heavily congested area within three daycares operating off of Trotting Lane slash Harness Drive. Myself, my sister, and my niece all own and operate large family daycares. I've been operating for over 21 years. My sister, Kathleen Scala, for over 40 years, and my niece, Jennifer Scala, for over 15. We all have been in the area for the duration of our businesses and are all abutters to the proposed site. With all of us having large family daycares at any given time, there could be up to 30 children in our combined care. That being said, the traffic from daycare parents as well as the traffic from others who reside in the area, combined with the traffic of the residential 40B site, in my opinion, creates a hazardous situation for the children in our care as well as the, as well as the residents in the area. Recently, there have been two similar sites constructed in a radius of less than a mile off Trotting Park Road, which are also both located less than a mile from the proposed site off Percival Road. I think it would be a great disservice to the Falmouth taxpaying individuals that reside in this area to allow yet another 40B construction site to be built in an already heavily congested area. Sincerely, Heidi Ingram. Uh, this letter is from Nason and Corrine Swain, 149 Percival Road. To the Board of Appeals, 
We are writing you with our concerns, questions, and statements for the 40B project that is being proposed for Percival Road. Unfortunately, we are unable to attend this meeting due to prior engagement. We have already submitted a previous letter stating our concerns this project will have on the traffic that will increase on Percival Road. Cars will continue to have to pull over to let another car pass. The increased traffic will create havoc for the current residents. The changes made do not resolve our concern, they only add to it. With this new plan brought to the board, it appears the applicant is planning on using a portion of this lot that has an existing road easement on Percival Road that does not solely belong to them, but to all of Percival Road. He cannot plant shrubs, build an island, or use it for drainage. Back when Carl Gonzalez subdivided his 10-acre property into four lots, he granted a 22-foot wide future road easement to get approval for the lots, uh, which is 1-4, book 589, page 39. Please see the attached deed for lots 2 and lot 3 referencing the easement and the plot plan showing the road easement. We also do have a question in regards to site approval from Mass Housing. In the applicant's letter from Mass Housing, it states that if a change in tenure type, building type, or height, you may be required to submit a new site approval application for review by Mass Housing. Has the applicant received the additional approval from Mass Housing? This clearly is a change in building type and should be reviewed. We have reviewed the new plan submitted and we still do not see a detailed landscape plan for this new proposal that was requested from the AFC, we strongly object to this waiver. We feel we should see a final landscape plan. On sheet six of six, on the site distance plan dated 6 21 it shows plantings halfway into Percival Road. Percival Road is wide enough for only one car to pass at a time. Adding these plantings will only add to the difficulty and safety concerns for two cars trying to enter or exit at the same time. This will again create a dangerous situ situation when you add an additional 35 plus cars or potential 48 plus people walking, driving at the entrance site. Another safety concern is the catch basins. The plan shows part of them being located on a portion of Percival Road with the guardrails on Rosewood side, but not on Percival Road side. The applicant is also requesting trees along Trotting Park Road to be removed. Has he spoken with the tree warden? The oak tree at the end of Percival Road is a healthy tree. So not only is the applicant looking to clear cut this property of all the mature trees, but now he is trying to remove town owned trees. In regards to clear cutting this property, this will also affect the habitat of several box turtles that have been documented by pictures and video. Ironically, we saw one this morning. Our final question is in regard to application time. Is there an expiration date on a 40B application? The project has been brought in front of the zoning board for well over a year now. This property is clearly not suitable for this 40B and it is time to put it to rest. Thank you, Nason and Corrine Swain. And then there's attachments to those letters of the deed, map, and parcel information that he referenced. Uh, this again is from uh, Nason uh, Swain. Uh, and it's information that says, this is what I got from Melinda that they filed with the planning department. It is the last page of the 40B plan file that shows future road widening easement that was reco recorded December 11, 2003. So I don't see how the new plans for Rosewood condominiums can use this road easement for plantings and catch basin. I will email my letter of concerns shortly, which was the prior letter that I read. Then this is from Donald and Michelle Drew, 3 Harness Drive, T-Ticket, Mass. Zoning Board of Appeals, some months ago my wife and I sent a letter in support of Percival Road 40B project. A lot has changed with, the, changed with the project, and Mr. Montero has come by continuously to keep us informed with his intentions and the scope of the project. Back when the fir this first came about, the big concern of all the neighbors was the idea of cutting a road through Harness Drive and risk the two daycare centers on Harness one of which abuts the project, as well as my property, which is the only other house on Harness Drive, as well as the only other abutter on Harness Drive. That issue was addressed in the very beginning and was never the intention of Mr. Montero. I personally feel that the location is ideal for the project as far as amenities such as food, gas, post office, bank, school, and yes, even Duncan, all of which are within a mile to a mile and a half from the project, and is why I think there are other similar projects in the area also. I also 
don't need to say it, but we need ha affordable housing, but we need housing affordable and otherwise. So we'd like to reiterate our support of the project and believe it will be beneficial to the town. And this is from uh, Lisa Devlin. Uh, it says, uh, our names are Lisa and Jeff Devlin, and we are homeowners and residents of Percival Road. We are writing this letter to express our concerns, our fears, and our direct opposition to the proposed 16 unit 40B on Percival Road. This five acre land serves as a wildlife corridor for animals moving toward Long Pond. Just the other day, we watched two large does making their way th through this proposed development toward the town forest. This land is also frequented by turkeys and is a reprieve for the wildlife in a heavily developed area. This land, which was previously unbuildable, is on a water recharge area. If this land was not able to be developed under current zoning requirements of one house per acre, how does it make sense now to put 16 houses on the land? Is this development too close to Long Pond for a project of this size? There are five 40B projects in a one mile radius of this development. This includes two that already exist on Trotting Park. Can Trotting Park support another development? I've been pulling out of Percival onto Trotting Park for the last 10 years. It's very dangerous pull out with cars traveling quickly and it is directly on a corner. Another concern that we have is the access to this development. Percival Road is a private road and the residents that live in this road actually own the road with most of our lots extending across the road. It is a single lane road that serves as access to the approximately 14 homes in the street. There are very few times when we drive down the road, we don't have to pull over and let our neighbors pass. This proposed development would add a potential of 32 to 48 cars to the area. If the expectation is that Percival Road will be tied in in any way to access this project, traffic and accessibility of residents and emergency vehicles would be a major problem. We have been following the meetings and concerns of the board members. We have seen the proposed plans and we are confused as to why we are still discussing this project. The access issues, the private road. Uh, previously unbuildable lot, the traffic concerns and the opposition of the neighbors on the road should speak volumes. Respectfully, Lisa and Jeff Devlin. Uh, this is from Deborah C. Witter, uh, 211 Trotting Park Road. Uh, Chairman Terrence Hurry, I am concerned about the impact that it, the construction development of the above reference project will have on the entire neighborhood and wildlife that we enjoy sharing our environment with. This is a wildlife corridor. On November 19, 2020, at 7 a.m. in the morning, six coyotes traveled through my property and into the wooded area behind my house, which is the location that is designated for this project. I sent you a digital photo taken of these animals on May 12, 2021. Three deer traveled through the same path. On June 14, the box turtle, turtle was spotted on the property. We have coyotes, turkeys, and deer that frequent our properties through the wooded area. The project will surely impact this. I am an abutter to this property and I am concerned about the safety issues regarding entering and exiting Percival Way from Trotting Park Road and the proposed parallel road to the development. Traffic patterns will be confusing on both roads and Trotting Park Road. There is a sign at the end of Trotting Park Road that was placed by the town saying no throughway of trucks. I object to large construction vehicles entering and exiting the development on Trotting Park Road. The town of Falmouth has advised one of the abutters that the developer does not plan on providing a barrier between the existing properties and the development. I have requested in my last letter that the developer provide either a fence or a green live barrier between properties. In conclusion, I object to the construction of such a densely uh, populated project. Uh, then uh, from Jennifer Scala. As we have expressed as neighbors, we are against the 40B project because of the destruction of the forage. Of the forage will devastate our wildlife and cause an eminent safety hazard to Harness Drive and Trotting Park Road. As we have stated, there are three daycares that abut this property, which will be severely impacted by the mass destruction and traffic that this project will cause. There are seven plus affordable housing projects within one mile of Harness Drive. There is the one on Brook Hill, the new condo 40B on Trotting Park, the blue building one across the McDonald's, and the small white condo one at the beginning of Trotting Park, the new one built on Locust Field, and the one at the Sandwich Road Lights, not to mention the several on Gifford Street. I believe that another project of this type would be very discriminatory towards T-Ticket as a whole. Not to mention, like we have already stated, the safety issues it would bring to Trotting Park and traffic. 
bus stops, and our children. Percival and Harness Drive will be destroyed by the clearing of 16 houses built. First of all, it's a fire hazard. Second of all, the aquifer doesn't run the watershed and the box turtles, coyotes, osprey, and deer that live here will forever be destroyed. There is no safe way to allow for three cars times 16 houses to get to and from T ticket. Traffic on Trotting Park is already horrendous. Should this project go through, I'm asking for a 20-foot buffer of trees that are already standing and a white fence of the wall pole fence style to maintain our privacy. The safety of our children and the children in our family child care, and so we can try and preserve a little of the natural habitat in our animals and families live in. The property owner was turned down by the town to subdivide into three lots. How can you approve 16 houses there? I understand the state is in dire need of affordable housing, but four affordable houses wouldn't help much. Please take into consideration our pleas to stop this project that will not only put our wildlife, our forage, our aquifer, and our children at risk but will devastate our small community. As much as the state is in need of housing, they are also in desperate need of child care. With three child cares abutting this project serving over 40 families, I believe that the child care is more beneficial to our families struggling than a 40B project that will house four affordable homes. Lowering the asking price of probably 450 k to four families isn't helping the need for affordable housing. This doesn't help families This doesn't help families risk. It's a money maker and a forage and wildlife killer. This 40B project is not suitable for the location. Thank you for your time and consideration. Jennifer Scala, 6 and 10 Harness Drive, T Ticket Mass. And then this is from uh, Troy Wall Associates, uh, dated August 18th, 2020, regarding Zero Percival Road, Echo Land Development LLC, application for comprehensive permit. Dear Chairman Hurry, as the board is aware, I represent Daniel Coltori, owner of 187 Percival Road, Patricia A. Harris, owner of 181 Percival Road, and William and Margaret Overholtz, owners of 193 Percival Road, here and after abutters. Each abutter owns property that directly abuts the proposed development. The abutters object to the project proposed for the reasons set forth in previously submitted correspondence and for the reasons herein. One, the revised plans impermissibly show plantings in Percival Road. At the last hearing, the abutters asserted that the developer's proposed access into the development presents unacceptable safety hazards because the proposed road overlaps and transects Percival Road. In an apparent acknowledgement that the design is unsafe, the developer submitted revised plans showing a decorative planting area and tree planted as a buffer. These plantings are an attempt to address the traffic conflicts inherent in the design by creating some separation between the new road and Percival Road. However, this attempt fails because the developer is proposing the plantings in Percival Road and the developer cannot lawfully do so. The abutter's ownership derives from property shown in a plan recorded in Plan Book 430, page 9, Exhibit 1 attached. The plan shows that the property is bounded on a way and that ownership extends to the middle of the way. The way is identified as Old Mill Road, but is now known as Percival Road. It is a well-stated rule that when land is bounded on a way, all property owners on the way are stopped to deny the existence of the way, and the right acquired by an owner of land on the way, an easement of the way, is not only coextensive with their land, but includes the entire length of the way. See Castle versus uh, Sinnerson, 325 Mass, 85, 89, 1916. The right of use of the way includes the right to pass and repass over the way for purposes of ingress and egress to the properties on the way. Beauregard versus D. Nadal, 71 Mass, uh, Appeals Court, 1107, and that's from 2008. By virtue of this rule, the abutters each have the right in common with others to use Percival Road, a.k.a. Old Mill Road to pass and repass in an easterly westerly direction from their properties to Trotting Park Road. As more fully explained in my earlier correspondence dated December 8, 2020, the respective rights of the parties in the remaining portion of Percival Road, which runs in a northerly southerly direction over the abutters' properties, is distinctively different. The portion, the portion of Percival Road derives from a private easement. The developer has no right of access to this portion of Percival Road. The decorative planting area and the trees planted as a buffer are shown within the bounds of Percival Road and will occupy one half of the road. 
The developer has no right to install plants or trees within the bounds of Purcell Road because such would unlawfully interfere with the abutter's easement rights and the rights of others to pass and repass over Purcell Road. Since the planting cannot be legally implemented, the board should require the developer to submit further revised plans with proposed planting areas removed. To do otherwise would result in misleading plans in an uncertain future for Percival Road. Once the proposed planting areas are removed, the developer will be back to the design that the abutters assert is unsafe and which the developer has conceded unsafe. In Zoning Board of Appeals of Groton versus Housing Appeals Committee 451 Mass 35 from 2008, Exhibit 2, the Groton Board of Appeals denied a 40B application because of safety hazards including inadequate stopping site distance at the intersection where the development access road intersects with the public way, two, the risk of motor vehicle accidents involving motor vehicles traveling from the access road onto the public way, and three, the developer's failure to show that the development could be adequately served by emergency vehicles. The developer appealed the denial but the Massachusetts Supreme Court held that the board properly denied the application of a comprehensive permit. The proposed project presents similar safety hazards. The Board of Appeals should be well within its authority to deny the developer's application because of these safety hazards. Two, the road providing access to the proposed homes is a street and not a common driveway. At the July 8, 2021 hearing, the developer purported to change the nature of the development from a 16-lot subdivision to a 16-unit condominium and asserted that the access road should now be reviewed as a common driveway and not as a street. This change is nomenclature is a transparent attempt to avoid compliance with and to avoid having to request at least seven waivers from the Falmouth Subdivision Regulations. A common driveway is defined in the Falmouth Zoning Bylaws, a vehicular way which is not a street providing access to three or more residential, industrial, or commercial lots. The developer's attempt to characterize the roadway as a common driveway fails for two reasons. First, to be a common driveway, the roadway must provide access to three or more lots. When the developer changed the project from a subdivision to a condominium, the project went from 16 lots to a single lot. Since the roadway provides access to a single lot and not three or more lots, it does not meet the definition of a common driveway. Second, a means of access to 16 single-family homes, the roadway is undeniably a street and not a common driveway. Indeed, under uh, subsection 305-4 of the Falmouth Subdivision Regulations, a single-family residence is deemed to produce 10 vehicle trips per day. Thus, the proposed development is, propo is presumed to generate 160 vehicle trips every day. It defies uh, credulity or characterize the way as a common driveway rather than a street, given the number of dwellings served and the volume of traffic generated. Safety concerns demand that the street comply with the subdivision regulations. The street, as it is currently proposed, fails to comply with the following safety-based regulations. 305-24A1. Streets shall be designed and located to be continuous with existing streets insofar as practical and shall compose a convenient system with connections adequate to ensure free and safe movement. 305-24B1A, streets shall be designed with a layout of 44 feet. 305-24B1B, width of pavement shall be 22 feet. 305-24B8, if a street layout at the entrance to the subdivision abuts property not owned by the subdivider, the width of the layout shall be 60 feet for the first 200 feet from the intersecting road. The entrance road should be located within the layout so that the extra 16 feet of width will be used to provide additional buffering from the road for the abutting property owner. <clears throat> 305-24D2, dead end streets shall not be longer than 500 feet. In section uh, 305-24D3, dead end streets shall provide a turnaround with a radius of at least 60 feet. Three, the developer has failed to provide any justification for the waivers being requested. It is the burden of the applicant to demonstrate that each waiver requested is consistent with the local needs and concerns. Consistent with local needs means local requirements and regulations imposed on a project are reasonable in view of regional need for low and moderate income housing, considered with the number of low income persons in the affected municipality and with local concerns, and if such local requirements and regulations are applied as equally as possible to both subsidized and unsubsidized housing. 
Local concern means the need to protect the health and safety of the occupants of a proposed project or of the residents of the municipality to protect the natural environment to promote better site and building design in relation to the surroundings in municipal and regional planning or to preserve open space. The applicant has requested numerous waivers but has not provided the board with any justification or demonstration that the waivers being requested are consistent with local needs and local concerns. In addition to the subdivision regulation cited above, the abutters contend that the project is inconsistent with the following Falmouth bylaws and regulations. A, Water Resource Protection District. The Water Resource Protection District was adopted to promote the health, safety, and general welfare of the community by ensuring an adequate quality and quantity of drinking water to conserve natural resources of the town and to prevent temporary and permanent contamination of the environment. The WRPD effectuates these purposes by increasing the minimum lot size in the Ag B district to 80,000 square feet, minimum frontage 150 feet, and minimum lot width to 200 feet, and by limiting lot coverage to 40%. The applicant is proposing each condominium unit with 16,000 square feet of exclusive use area, a de facto lot, only 20% the size required by the WRPD. Similarly, the proposed lots have 77 feet of frontage, only 50% of that required by the WRPD, and the lots will be 77 feet wide, only 38.5% of the width required by the WRPD. The 16,000 square foot lots are grossly inconsistent with local concerns embodied in the WRPD. B, the Coastal Pond Overlay District. The Coastal Pond Overlay District, CPOD, was adopted to preserve water quality in coastal ponds and harbors, and the provision of the CPOD applied to the subdivisions of greater than five lots or greater than five acres. In order to protect water quality, the CPOD requires such subdivisions to have a shared wastewater treatment facility. If the applicant demonstrates that such facilities are not feasible, individual nitrogen moving on-site systems shall be required instead. The proposed project has neither a shared wastewater treatment facility nor denitrifying septic systems. The proposed project has 16 individual conventional Title V systems, each with a three-bedroom capacity. This is inconsistent with the local concerns embodied in the CPOD. C, the Wildlife Corridor Regulations. The Wildlife Corridor Regulations were adopted to protect wildlife by requiring development to be designed to coexist with wildlife in important wildlife habitat by establishing permanent corridors for wildlife feeding, breeding, and movement. These purposes are accomplished by requiring dedicated open space for wildlife, the proposed project has no dedicated open space area for wildlife. It is thus inconsistent with the local concerns embodied in the Wildlife Corridor Regulations. D, the Local Comprehensive Plan and the Falmouth Housing Production Plan. The Local Comprehensive Plan states that the affordable housing should be located in areas with available infrastructure. Thus, affordable housing should be within walking distance to schools, places of worship, shops, and other services. The development fails to satisfy this requirement, as noted in the Board of Selectmen's referral letter to Mass Housing, dated March 23rd, 2020. The project is located more than a mile to the nearest store to buy any basic provisions or any schools or parks. Many stretches of this 15 plus minute walk do not have sidewalks. The housing production plan states that Falmouth needs one bedroom and two bedroom affordable housing, not three bedroom housing. The proposed three bedroom affordable dwellings are inconsistent with local needs. Conclusion, the abutters request that the Board of Appeals deny the proposed application for comprehensive permit as inconsistent with local needs and local concerns because one, the safety hazards with the proposed roadway, two, the adverse health and safety impacts that will result from this overly dense development in an area located in multiple sensitive overlay districts, and three, elimination of all open space in a designated wildlife corridor. And that is uh, signed respectfully, Brian Wall, and there's attachments relating to the items in the letter. Right. We also have our information from our um, peer review, but I'll Maybe let them go on over there. <clears throat> Thank you for reading all that in, Bob. And for the applicant, we have Mr. McKenzie. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, fellow board members. Uh, if we can, if you could indulge me, Jack Landis Collier, our engineer, has a conflict with another hearing in Bourne. And if, if he could speak first and answer any engineering questions you have, I'd like to be able to get him up there so that he can meet that meeting. Certainly help accommodate his schedule. Sure. Thank you. To that end, if you do have specific questions, I'd be happy to answer them. I also want to let you know prior to uh, asking me anything, I did speak to Adele. 
um, regarding the stormwater calculations, and I understand that he ex has yes. different expectations. Well, so, well, can, okay. can you hear me better now? He can speak up, but just so everyone knows, these microphones, they're not meant for a a amplification. They're meant for people watching at home. Okay, oh. thank you for saying that. Um, as I was saying, I, I did speak to um, the peer review engineer, and there are two expectations that he has um, that we have not provided, and I intend to provide those. So to that end, I won't argue that. That has to do with the total stormwater flowage, and the other is the pretreatment of the uh, drainage basins. Um, so to that end, like I said, um, we will provide that as he's so depicted or so noted. Um, are there any questions the board has regarding engineering that I can answer? All right, we'll turn it to the board. Any questions, Bob, anything? Uh, just a quick question. So I, I know you said you'll provide that information. So can you tell us when you'd be able to provide that by? That's a good question. Um, it's gonna be at least a minimum of two weeks. Um, and I'm going to hold any future questions because I want to hear from our peer engineer. Sure. Scott? As do I. All right. James? No, wait for peer engineer. Mm -hmm. peer review. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll do the same. So. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your time tonight. Okay, thank you. As you recall, the last, the first meeting that we had here, we proposed a 16-lot subdivision um, using Percival Road, widening Percival Road, and to approve it. At the first hearing, um, it was brought up that we didn't really have rights in Percival Road, although it was a natural assumption since the property abutted Percival Road. Um, and it was suggested that the only way we could do this plan was to put the road on our property. And what we did is we came back with another plan, putting it on the road, and then changed it to from 16 single-family houses to 16 standalone condominiums with a driveway. I um, wanted to refer to a couple of things that are in Attorney Wallace's letter, and I agree with some things in there and some things we do not agree with, and we would have to make a change. And that's the first one. When you see up at the top, um, this is actually personal road lines from here to this point. From there to this point is Old Mill Road, Old Mill Lane. And, um, that's where we have our frontage. We have about 190 feet of frontage on Old Mill. And in Mr. Wall's letter, he correctly states that we cannot deny the existence of the way, um, and neither can they reciprocally deny our existence or our rights within that road. We, at the end of the last hearing, I spoke with Brian outside and said that what we'd like to do is improve the access there um, and see if his clients would be interested in coming to some agreement to do that. We still have, as he said, they have rights in the full width of Old Mill Lane to come down. And similarly, Ed Montero has rights in the full width. And we do not have, it, we would have to make a change, we do not have the right to put the plantings or the trees in that portion of Percival Lane. But we do have the right to move the driveway onto Percival Lane because Old Mill Road is our access right in. And we could utilize the full width of that and improve that entrance dramatically and then what we would do is instead of having the sign and the bowl with changes this driver would move more up here and then the split would be right up here towards the end of our property so we'd be looking about 160 feet in from the road which would create a very nice safe access uh, with the road could be widened and even moved over because we have the right as mr wald's letter says we have the right to not only the full with an access of the property, we also have the right to improve it. We also have, by implication, under the statute, we have the right to lay utilities. So we can make that road even wider than it is right now to, to safely improve that access. That, I think, is the biggest concern that most people have with the plan we have here, and we would have to come back with that change. And I've talked with Jack and Eddie about this already, that this is something we could do and have back for you for, uh, we might have to do one more hearing in order to get that change. But everything else is, you know, you can, people can try to call it a lot or call it a, a road. We've designed it to meet pretty close to subdivision standards just for safety. 
Uh, we do have buffers. There's a buffer between this road and Percival Road. We also, at the last hearing, we offered a 10-foot buffer to all of the property owners to the rear of all the lots. And those trees and all would stay there and remain there. So there is still an area in there for buffer. Um, there aren't too many other changes to that, but I do want to point out a couple things. It's, we have... Mr. McKenzie, can I just ask a question just while sure you're discussing me. it so it's clear in my mind? So um, uh, where does it state that Old Mill only goes that far and then Percival Road goes the rest of the way versus saying that Old Mill was Percival? Well, there's actually a copy of the plan uh, that was in Brian's letter. And, and I also have another plan. This one, Mr. Gonzales developed the property and subdivided this. This is Percival Road running across here. And then from what was originally Locust Field Road and the road that changed to Trotting Park Road, this is Old Mill Road. And it's, I'm looking for, in Brian's letter to you, there's a plan recorded in book 420, page nine, which he's highlighted in his letter. And coming off of Locust Field, as I said, which is now Trotting Park, this portion from here, continuing up through here, is Old Mill Road. Percival Road starts right here, and that was the grant of the access, or Goat Alley, as it was originally called. So Percival Road doesn't come all the way out to 28, and, and in one of the, Brian's previous letters, he said that his clients don't understand why it's still not referred to as Old Mill Way, and neither do I. But for some reason, the, the town refers to it as Percival Way. That the, section of the road is actually Old Mill Road. And where you were mentioning you would have to remove the trees and the plantings that were, that were pushed over. So, so how would you get some kind of a buffer in there to show a separation between your common driveway well, that you're calling it in the road? Widen the roadway at the entrance to make it much safer. Run it up to about here, okay, and then Percival Road continues this way for them. And then we would have plantings in here, and a, a, a boulder or something with an arrow that says Percival Road this way and goes for this way. So it would be about 160, 170 feet in which would make the access, we'd have a wide access for both this development and an improved access for the, the residents of Percival Road. Steve, uh, uh, where you see that, that vertical line going up that separates the abutters property from that radius on the curb cut up top, um, right? Yes. In order to widen that, are you going to have to set that road back to widen that? We Coming have. to the left? This, this. Oh. See the, ra see the radius coming out of the curb cut? Yes, sir. All right. So if you see that radius, you see the two structures up there on the, on the, um, the town property? The property line for Mr. Montero's is that dark vertical line that goes right down the middle of the right. plant. This no, the other side. Oh, this one. Yeah, right? This one. Yes. So everything to the left is whose? Abutters? This is abutters. Okay, so if you go to the top of that... You'll see a, a little uh, radius that goes off to the left with two drainage structures. Right. That that piece right there. In order, you said you were going to widen that. In order to widen that, do you have to step back onto Mr. Montero's property where you you say you have? I, I think it was 150 feet of frontage. Where does the frontage occur on that curb cut? The, the frontage occurs. The frontage occurs on Old Mill Way. But you're still going to have to go into that, that piece to make that curb cut, aren't you? Perhaps I can answer this question before I, before I leave. Um, the frontage, um, starting from the lower right-hand side, where it says North 1935, you follow it, you keep going, and then it comes up to South 772504. That is the end of this frontage right there. So the number 2359 is upside down. Might be easier to use the mouse if you could use the mouse behind the podium there to kind of sure. To it. Jack, I guess my question is okay. if, even with that frontage argument out of the way, how, how do you achieve that curb cut to the left if you've got to come back into the property more? Well, that where those two structures sit will, in, it will in, uh, inhibit that, won't it? No, actually what we're doing is we're taking the entire entrance of the driveway and shifting it to the right, or in this case, I wish this wasn't upside down. Um, yeah, 
to, it would be to the north. Um, the actual footprint of the driveway will remain substantially the same, but where you see the 15-foot radius at the top of the page, that radius and the road will be shifted to the right. So the whole so, curb cut will go to the north? That is correct. And those 15-foot radii, if we can utilize that section of land to the top, will now be more in conformance to the 25-foot radii rule that you have within the community. I still don't think we can keep it 25 feet, but we can get it very close to And there's to still that. no common ownership. Uh, is there dual ownership to that or dual easement access to that piece of property? Well, that's a legal issue. You'll have to speak to Well, Steve. that's a legal issue that has to be determined before yeah. we can make a decision, obviously, right? Right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So there were a couple other things that Brian brought up in his letter that I, I wanted to discuss. Uh, and similar to this, I'm saying that this is a road, we, we characterizing it as a road because it has so many units on it. We have other common driveways um, right around the corner from here and other projects that are still common driveways. They're not considered roads. Uh, Brick Hill Place was a 40B development that I did on Brick Hill Road. There were 20 units in there, which is four more units than this unit. That's a common driveway. Other common driveways, for example, uh, the Sipworths at Hills Condos um, up at Palmer Ave. That's 51 Carlson Lane. There's 30 units in there. Every condo in there has an address of 51 Carlson Lane, Unit 1, 2, and 3. That's a common driveway. It also exceeds over 500 feet, just as the Kiln Place does. This, this type of development has been approved several times in here. So it's, it's not a road. It's still a driveway. Um, and then there was a discussion about the fact that the town says that the, the road would be 10 vehicle trips a day. That's not in Section 305-4. That's a definition in Section 305-3, which was when your town tries to determine whether it's a minor street or a major street. And it says that they use 10 trips a day. But the, we always use the Institute of Transportation Engineers ITE trip generation manual, which says for single family houses, it's 0 0.96 trips per day. So we're going to be producing about 16 round trips a day. And each of those trips is a round trip. And that's pretty consistent with most, how most of us live. We leave a house in the morning, we go to work. If we have to go to the store, we go to the store, then we come back home. That's the trip. There may be another trip. But it's not 10 trips a day. That's in the definition section under 305-3 for how they determine whether the street's a major street or a minor street. So we're not, we're not planning to generate any, anywhere near that kind of trip. Steve, was that, uh, was that uh, determination made prior to uh, the state of the country now that more people are working at home? Uh, no, that's, they, I don't think they've revised it in the 11th edition. The last one I've looked at, it's still the same. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, all of the concerns under 305-24 uh, don't apply any longer because it's not a road. Those all deal with dead-end streets, teaching um, the 60-foot the, uh, radius. If you go into 24-D3, it also provides for the T turnaround, which is, we've approved several times, and you just recently approved one on uh, Clamshell Lane on off of Davisville Road. It, the T driveway turnaround is acceptable by the fire department, and it's this is not a road, so everything that's in 305-24 does not apply to this development. So, Steve, what was the what was the reasoning to change from single-family ownership to condominium? We just thought it was a, a, a better way to do this rather than trying to put in a full subdivision road and making the lots. The, what would have been lots smaller. Um, th this allowed us to give safe access to everyone um, and have one association that would maintain the road, maintain the drainage, um, rather than having, you know, we're not asking the town to take it. This would be totally private. So because you've now changed the actual type of the building, have you made any contact with Mass Housing to find out if you have to reapply? Uh, yeah, I've called Mike Busby and asked him to send a letter to you uh, saying that we're essentially the same. It's still 16 three-bedroom houses. And these are standalone condominiums. It's just a condominium form of ownership. It's still a single-family house. Uh, well, and when do you expect that letter? Um, I, I've asked him to have it for this meeting, but apparently it hasn't been delivered yet. And would you also have to resubmit um, appraisals since you're now dealing with condominium versus single-family homes? No, because we think the values are essentially the same. So how can you how can you do comps on single family <clears throat> homes using condominiums? It doesn't. 
Well, because this type of condominium is different than the regular condominiums. As I said in the last hearing, this is going to be similar to the Willowbend development, that each of these homes is going to be owned entirely. Uh, you own the whole building. It's not a studs in like a typical condominium association where the association takes care of everything else. And if the roofs need to be done or the septics need to be replaced, that's done by the association. In this particular association, it's, it's going to be the homeowner will be responsible for the roof, the painting, window replacement, septic replacement. The only association um, features will be the driveway itself, uh, snow plowing of the driveway, the uh, drainage structures, the um, the plantings, the bench for the school kids, that sort of thing. The sidewalks. So if a, so, so if 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 a, if a buyer was lucky to do financing, what would the requirements be for an appraisal? Would they be able to use single-family homes for their comparables, or would they be required to use condominiums? I honestly don't know, Rob. I would I would assume it's going to be the same as a single-family because that's how it's being designed. Because they are completely standalone. All, and each lot will have its own exclusive use area. Because I've just, I've just never seen, um, I've just never seen an, an appraisal, even on standalone condominiums, be able to use single-family homes. They always used to have to use same like properties, which are other condominiums. They could go to another single-family condominium. They may have to go out of the area, but um, I just, that answer just doesn't make sense to me. Um, so we get the letter from the state. Uh, do you have any idea breakdowns on association fees, costs? I know you mentioned something before about percentage of unit ownership. You're going to submit some information to the file on other projects. Yeah, we were going to. And I hadn't seen anything yet. Have you submitted that? I have not. No. What we said is that the fees would be very minimal because there's the only things we're looking at is the driveway will be in. It's the maintenance for the driveway, maintenance for the catch basins and everything else, and it's going to be very nominal common area charges. What about, um, what about voting rights for the association? Would the affordable units have the same voting rights as the market rate units? Only if we're allowed to do so. I did, and right now, I haven't seen a change. The laws, I know that there was some movement up in the state to do that, but as far as I know right now, it's still under mass law. It's by value of the unit versus the total aggregate value of all the units. All right, if you could still submit that information that you said you were going to submit, that'd be great. Anything else, Mr. McKenzie, or would you like to turn it over to board questions? I know we've kind of had a turn little bit of back and forth here, but. Yeah. All right. Yes, please. Uh, James, anything? This time. All right. Scott, any follow-up questions? I just have one small one. Oh, during your opening statements, you, you had mentioned that someone suggested that you put the road onto the, the applicant's property. Who made that suggestion to you? Uh, it was suggested in a letter to um, Attorney Wall that since we didn't have rights in that section of Percival Road, which we just naturally assumed when you looked at the plans about it, you would just assume you had the rights. Uh, it was suggested in, this, I think, this opening letter to you that um, the only way we could do this was to move it onto our property. So that's how you came to the determination that you were going to move it onto your own property? Exactly. Thank you, right. Mr. Chairman. And Bob, anything else? No, just a, just a question, and <clears throat> I'm just trying to reference the plans. On, um, now, some of these units have garages, correct? Yes, the ranches do. The ranches have garages, so one of those will then be an affordable unit? There will be four affordable units, two would be Cape Style, and two would be Ranch. Okay. And I believe they were designated as, uh, would be units 3, 10, 11, and 15, I think is what we had. We had submitted a, a tabulation. Yeah, they des were designating 3, 10, 11, and 15, those are the affordables. Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, maybe now's a good time to hear from our peer engineer. Yes. <coughs> good evening, uh, Adal Shaheen, Green International, the peer review engineers. So, uh, we've received the revised plans last week, as well as res responses to our initial comments, our second round of comments, and also a stormwater report uh, just Sunday, this week. So, uh, 
We have reviewed them, add, had, had added more comments, and so tonight I'm just going to over, over the major comments, and I can take any questions from the board if you have, or you want me to go through other ones, I have to do that. Um, speak louder. Sure, and Mr. Sheen, if you don't mind uh, enunciating a little, or being a little louder, I think um, sure. yeah, no we're some issues tonight. That's all right. No problem. So as I said, tonight we're going to just go over the major comments, uh, you know, that we have based on our recent review from uh, from this week. So uh, first comment uh, again, we I know I heard from Mr. McKenzie here about the uh, 305-24. Uh, we have a lot of comments on that, and we, some of them have deferred back to the board. Uh, again, if those driveways have been accepted as a private driveway. We can live with some of those comments that we can probably say, okay, that's not applicable. But if it doesn't, if this is, you know, at some point it's going to turn over to the, to the town or the city, then we'd like to see them addressing these comments. But if it remains as private, you know, we can, we can probably omit some of those comments. You mean legally? L legally, right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, one of them, though, we'd like to see that I know they requested a waiver, which is in particular comment number. Um, 26. Uh, we we wanted to see the grading at the where the, the the new driveway meets uh, Troying Park Road. We just wanted to make sure that's safe for for pedestrians, also safe for you know for uh, uh, travelers. So we, we wanted to see the grading a little bit of that you know. So we wanted to see make sure that's all safe for every, for everyone. Uh, there was no really uh, you know bylaws requirements on that one, but I think we just wanted to see it to make sure it's safe. Uh, 27B, uh, again, this has to be to do with the fire department. I know they said the fire department has approved uh, the access and turning around on the site. Uh, we haven't seen the letter, so we just recommend that they submit a letter from the fire department acknowledging that this is approved. Uh, the next comment I ha we have was on the... Uh, Forty-one A, which to do with the sidewalk. Uh, looking at the plans, the only providing four feet sidewalk for the whole, uh, the, for the whole, uh, along the whole driveway. Uh, there's a, there's a, it, the rules are if you have more than two hundred feet of sidewalk with four feet, you need to find by five by five area. So we'd like that to see that on the plan uh, for ADA uh, requirements. That's ADA. Yep. So that's the comment number forty-one. Uh, 42. You said that's with ADA, correct? That's with the ADA, yeah. That's ADA requirements, and that's in our, uh, you can see that in our comment, number 41A. Uh, 41, 40, 42A, uh, I know we, uh, we asked them to show the, uh, uh, the, the location of the stone bounds, the concrete pounds in the plans. We had just, they said they will do it. We just wanted to see where the locations are. Not necessarily install them, but at least to see, show them in the plan. Uh, again, 44, 47, 47A also, uh, we'd like to see some grading plans to show the ADA require compliance, that we haven't seen that in the plan. Uh, ADO stated it's private, it doesn't need lo local requirements, but that's like an ADA, is, you know, they have to meet the ADA requirement, that's not just a local requirement, it's, it's an ADA requirement that has to be met. Um, and then do we have a bunch of new comments or open comments that are shown in yellow in the plan and the sets that I gave you. Going to um, comment number 54. Again, that's to do with the fire department turnaround and access to the site. Again, they said that it was approved. We just wanted to see a comment, uh, the letter. 55B. Um, Side distance, although they're showing side distance coming out of the uh, the new driveway, they show a distance. Once its requirements is 150, they show 178, but that distance should have been actually to the center of the approach uh, approach and lane. So we need to see that. I think just made a comment. I think they have it. We just wanted to make sure it's to the right location. It's not to the edge of the pavement. It's actually the center of the approaching lane coming at you. But they're proposing to change all that anyway. Exactly, but I guess when they revise it, we just like to see it to the right okay. location. So, 
All right, and then moving on. Um, moving on to the stormwater calculations. I know Jack have hit on it. The comments, you know, starting on um, 56 all the way down to the end of this, actually, it's all to do with the stormwater. <clears throat> so, again, the major one that we found that uh, your bylaws, I think, requires that we do the 25-year storm. They only looked at the one-year storm which is two and a half inches, so we will have to see the calculations for the 25-year storm. Um, and a lot of this is just a spin off those, those requirements, you know. For example, you know, we wanted to see, we wanted to see the drawdown calculations, we wanted to see a detail for the stones. This is comment number uh, 58. We just need to the specification for the ship stone they're proposing in the swales. Uh, we wanted to see also the drywalls for the houses. They saw that all the houses are going to be tied to drywalls, but they're not showing the plans. We want to show that. That's comment number 59A. Uh, we also need to make sure there's no increase in runoff going down to Trotton Lane Road, so that's why, uh, Park Road, so that's why we want to see the watershed plans because we haven't seen. In the calculation, there was no watershed plan, so that's comment number 62. That shows how they, what is the catchment areas, how they catch, what, what, is the, what is that encompass from the site. It was nothing, it was only description, but there was no like plan showing the catchment areas. Um, that's 61A? That's 61A, you no, know, 62, okay. 62, the watershed plan. Uh, again, 63A is a similar comment I said that was, they showed the one and the two and two and a half inches, you know, we wanted to see the 5.7. That's a 25-year storm. Um, 66, it has to do with the drawdown calculations per the uh, stormwater handbook. It's supposed to be draining within 72 hours. I think they have it based on what we've seen in JAS calculations, but we don't have the actual data. He just has the numbers in there, but we don't have the actual backlog or the logs for the borings. Um, then there's also 67A to do with the sediment pretreatment. I think Jack mentioned that they're going to address that hopefully within two weeks, give us the information so we can track it. And comment 71, 72, we just wanted to know where is the overflow from those basins that they're proposing. They're proposing some, if I can move these. Sheets here. Um, so you only have one sheet here. Where is the rest of the sheets? File. Here's the. Uh, it's the total uh, subdivision there. Do you have the individual sheet? Because heart is not shown in this one. I think we have the individual sheets. Yes, okay, that's good. That's thanks. So we they, we show in some basins in the middle. Okay, this is a low point here of the, the, the driveway. We show a calculation again, showing that it's storing the two and a half inch storm. But we just don't know what is what is going to what is going to go overflow from here because this has a certain capacity. Then what happens? Where does it go? So we just wanted to show that you know we questioned that. Those are comments number 71, 72, and seventy-three. It's most likely just to deal with the uh, with those overflows. Where does it overflow from here? So uh, the last comment was seventy-four was about watershed E. It's noted as as the previous area. But we just we have wanted to know does it include the roofs or it doesn't include because we're not really sure what is that's why I think if we get the watershed plan, we can see what is included in each watershed area because it wasn't clear to us what is happening because somehow the roof areas were not taken into account. Maybe because they've taken them down to drywalls, but we don't have the drywall shown nor do we have the calculations for it. So that's why we just wanted to know where it's going. So this is the major comments that we came across with this very view. And the rest of the comments are, I think, they, they can address them. 
I don't think they are major. They're just, they're just questions, and I'm sure they can provide responses for them. Uh, so i have to take any questions uh, from the board. Uh, if you have any questions on the, our comments, or you want me to go through uh, more details on any of them as well, I could. All right, we'll turn it over to board questions. Uh, board questions for our peer engineer. Bob, anything? Actually, yeah, on 29 and 30, regarding that sidewalk comments. Uh -huh. I mean, usually they, you would tie in the sidewalks, wouldn't you? It seems weird to stop them and... Yeah, I think that's why I think we... Especially when you have an exit and there's cars and... Yeah, there's a sliver, a sliver that's, uh, that's not showing. And I think last time... Come back. I use my thumb drive. I have it all combined into one file. Yeah, there's a sliver right in this area right here. That's still uh, no sidewalk. So. I think we suggested, recommended a easement taken from the butter to continue it, at least for continuation. But if you're moving this driveway over, I don't know if that's the plan. Is that a possibility? Or? I'm Ed Montero. I'd like to speak on a couple of the comments. On the uh, sidewalk, previously you guys approved the subdivision Brick Hill Road. It's a private road with a, a four-foot uh, walkway. The, uh, their sidewalk stops, so it's all self-contained on the property. That's what, I, that's what I'm doing on this one here, and I requested one of the waivers to be that where it doesn't meet ADA. If this is a regular subdivision, uh, going to subdivision plans, and you have to connect to the, uh, to the street, that would be done. But we do get cut off, and uh, the sidewalk would stop because uh, we're not going to meet the, uh, the town's uh, sidewalk. Every, everything is going to be self-contained on the, uh, the property. So the waiver is for four foot, not the 54 inches, for the ADA standards. So only time you're going to be using ADA standards, this is a 40B, I'll be requesting waivers. It's going to uh, either, either you grant the waiver or you don't because it's not a regular uh, subdivision. So that's why we want to keep the walkways uh, self-contained. He mentioned also on the, uh, the runoff of the houses. I explained to him there will be uh, common drywalls, 18-gallon, 30-gallon drywalls with crushed stone, which actually is sufficient for the houses if anybody's sold a house or built a house, you know, the self-contained. Uh, drywalls take care of the house. His runoff calculations that he's using for the drainage is actually for the state, not for what has been approved from the other three engineers in this town for what the town requirements are. He's going to a state standard and, and not a local standard for what's been either approved or what will be accepted by the DPW and the town engineer. So all these calculations and everything else is uh, over and above whatever else has been approved in this town for uh, 40 Bs or existing subdivisions that are already been approved or in construction right now. So that, that should be noted. So it's just we're doing redundancy for calculations for water drainage. I, I've been doing this all my life, okay? And, and to come up to you uh, say you're going to have state standards, it's not, it's not a state project. It's a, it's a private subdivision. It's a 40 B. We, we've thought about everything we have to do to be everything self-contained. Uh, there are other questions I want, I want to mention also from the comments from, the, uh, from Mr. Wall and everything. But uh, as far as the uh, sidewalk, your drainage, it's, uh, it meets the standards of what the uh, t uh, town engineer or the DPW uh, would accept. So, so on the, uh, just on the drywall description that you, that you just mentioned that will be there, so do you have that actually written anywhere in a way just so we have actually, it for the file? I put, actually, I put it on the plan. I, I put it on his comments. They're usually the concrete or plastic, depending on what you're doing. You usually have 18-gallon uh, drywalls, concrete, ton of stone on each one. That's self-contained for, uh, for the houses itself for any type of runoff. Any of the other drainage, the calculations that he needs on the road, going to all of our swells or all of our drainage, we meet the town specs. I mean, so if you're asking me to go to state, uh, specula, state specifications, it's, um, it's, not, it's not needed. I mean, so we're just being over, overly... Uh, cautious, o overly uh, developing on it and everything else, and, uh, and, and, it's, and it's not necessary. I mean, and you talk about the site view, we had the other plan for the site view. That tree, that oak tree is on my property. 
So when, when you drove down there and you said you can't see when you said you were coming out one day, that, that tree can be removed. That's not on the town property. It's actually right on my property if you look at the stake. When you're coming out for the road, if you want to say you have your, uh, your view looking down to uh, Trotting Park Road, whether you're going uh, uh, north or south on uh, Trotting Park. Just to let you know, they, I don't think the 25 years is not really a state standard. This is a town by law standard. It's, mm -hmm. We have a reference to it. Yeah. So, and that's where the 5.7 comes from. It's not a state. Uh, I know the town is in the process of adopting this stormwater, the state stormwater regulations. I know we, we know it hasn't been approved yet or adopted. That's why we didn't cite all of the requirements for the stormwater. That's why we just wanted to make sure 25 years storm is addressed. And that's what's cited in the bylaws. The dry wells, yes, if, if what he explains is the ones he's using, but we, have, we don't have them in the plan, we don't have a detail. So we need to see them in the plan. So just a reference, because you brought up that oak tree again, because I was there this morning just double checking. So somebody may or may not have moved your stakes, but the, the stakes that actually showed the lot line that said your lot lines are behind the tree that they're mentioning here. Mr. Montero, if... Yeah, I'm just going by your stakes that are in the ground. So yeah. the stakes that are in the ground, that tree is actually on, pretty much off, almost on the sidewalk at the street. Um, so um, if it is on your property, then you just have to have the stakes moved because it doesn't, it shows what we're going by when we visit mm -hmm. is where your stakes are. So are the, are the stakes incorrect? Unless somebody moved them. I mean, it's... Uh, we have so to does your ways. property go to the sidewalk in front? Can, can I see your camera? Yeah. So that's the... That's the tree they kept asking about, and that's where your stakes are on the side, even the, even the one that's over here. Right. And if you look at the way the corner comes in, that is in over here, and that stake is actually behind that. Yeah, so your stake is behind the tree. That's no. what I'm asking. Uh, yeah, it's behind the tree, so that's what I'm saying. It's all, so the tree is the, it's the town tree? No, I do not believe it's the town tree when we did the survey on that stuff. Well, that, so, that's, so that was my question, is yeah. that your <laughs> tree is here, this tree is here at the sidewalk, and all your stakes are about, I don't know, four or five feet behind it. So even if I did a turn radius, it seems like they're behind it. Yeah, so if they're, if they're, if they're wrong, yeah. just have the stakes yeah. changed. All right, uh, board questions for our peer engineer, Bob, anything else? No, I mean, we, we have to get, um, so Mr. Collie said he's going to need about two weeks just to get the other information to him. Mm -hmm. And then I assume Mr. Colley can look at the videotape from tonight so he'll know what the engineer said tonight so they can go over whatever that difference is just so we don't give additional time. Um, Through the chair, uh, no, go ahead, what, do you, what do you think the, uh, the legal um, issue, how long is that going to take before it comes back with regards to that shared I, I still want to focus on sorry, questions sorry. for, sorry, uh, Mr. McKenzie, I, I just want to still focus on questions for our peer engineer, and then we'll, oh, we'll, right. we'll circle back to that. You got anything for our peer no. engineer? James, anything? No. Mm -hmm. right. uh, I'm going back to notes from a previous meeting regarding the road profile and, and the grading exceeding the 2%. Has, was that addressed properly, or is that still an issue? Uh, that's uh, that's ba back to the comment of this is going to be a, a private driveway, a private driveway, because it'll be a private driveway. Mm -hmm. Then some of those rules will not apply, you know. Okay. Uh, if, if, if this is going to be a town road, I say yes, we need to adhere to them. But we don't know that yet. We don't know yet. So, but we do want to see it at the, at the, at the um, converge of the two, the driveway, and that's one of the comments that we made, that we need to see it, how they're going to merge into the existing roadway. All right. The grading there should be safe. Uh. Okay. Anything else for our peer engineer? All right. Thank you for your time. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Um, Mr. McKenzie or Mr. Montero, I don't know if you wanted to address any issues that have been raised so far. I know Mr. Montero was getting into some issues before we turn it over to public comment. The uh, couple of comments that was made by the, uh, the appellants, uh, for example, um, they say the uh, application 
uh, doesn't meet the local needs. Uh, basically, they were referring to is, is housing, okay, whether it's rentals or single family homes. There is a need. I've been in this business for over 35 years. And for someone uh, for the t who came from the town planner to say that there is no need for, for affordable housing, you just had Mr. Baker down here stating why, why isn't there enough. I think you have to look at the merits of this project from what I'm doing. Uh, every project that's been approved here under a 40B has been twice the size of uh, my project and almost probably half the land. And what I mean by that is, is that uh, we're at 2.6 acres per unit. Everybody else is at six units per acre. So, for example, uh, the, the uh, project over in uh, Brick Hill Road, you have 32 units. You have the rental uh, project over on Brick Hill Road. You have 20 units on probably two and a half acres of land. We did all the, all the site work there. So basically, I think the merits of that, where I've got to come even higher density, smaller uh, units. I thought I wanted to keep in with the neighborhood, keep everything uh, uh, within the, what the rest of the homes are looking like. Uh, the other thing is, uh, there's always saying there's uh, safety issues. The first thing that came out on the first hearing was uh, he can only do the project if the road is on, on uh, my property. It is on my property. Uh, we have to uh, make a few changes or whatever. It really doesn't have to do that because the road that they're looking at is, uh, is actually a road that was just put in there probably 50, 60 years ago where everybody got lazy. The one thing what the, that they're not saying is, is that when they had the easement that was given to Mill Road, it goes, it goes to the uh, north side of the property. So even if they thought, even if they have, think they have a right to have five or 10 feet on my lot line, I'm still on my property for the, uh, for the entranceway for coming in. The other day we were out there because you guys wanted perk tests. Board of Health was late. We were out there about six hours. They're talking about all the traffic congestion. Whole time we were out there doing perks, one car went by. I'm not saying that's not gonna increase, but they're trying to make it look like we have they have all this traffic coming in and out of there, and it isn't. The uh, other questions they were saying that you have the uh, sensitive to the overlay areas. The project just got approved on Brick Hill Road is the biggest wildlife co corridor area and overlay. But if you look at your original hearing from the first day, when you have your reviews from each department, okay, you had conservation came out, they say no comment. What does that mean? No comment, they didn't see any uh, wetlands, they didn't see any wildlife, because they're gonna be the first ones to uh, report to you if there is some type of issue on their property. So no comment means they had no problem, but we still had to go out and get a wetlands engineer because Mr. Oberholtz wanted us to do that because he said he saw a spotted turtle. And it's not there with evidence of the letter they just sent. The, uh, the other one is the uh, wildlife corridor. That whole area in a three-mile radius is in a wildlife wild, uh, life corridor. The only thing everybody says now is, oh, the houses are already there. Well, you've got to have vacant land if you're going to build. So it, it's, it's, it's not an area that's going to be uh, uh, detrimental, where you, you're actually taking any type of animals out of the area or running through there. It's just another excuse to keep prolonging the, uh, this hearing, to keep having me go back, adding one little thing like for uh, dry wells. He needs details of dry wells. I, I mean, it's um, every, every time they want one little thing, you go to the peer engineer, they don't see which way it's going, you gotta add to it. I mean, it, it's really not needed because the project right now is, is, uh, is, is ready to be either voted on or look to see if you want some changes. But all these uh, little things that the attorney comes up with just keeps prolonging the hearing, which, which is really getting redundant of us either explaining things or we're up here trying to uh, change things. The other ones, they say you had single family homes. It's an exclusive use area. It's, uh, if you go to Willow Bend, Willow Bend does not, uh, the houses in Willow Bend do not get uh, appraised as uh, condominiums. They get appraised as houses. They have condominiums there. So when you have the exclusive use area, whatever the size of that property is, that's considered your own area and it's a single family home. So that I, I don't see an issue on. Um, And basically what this really comes down to, I mean, let's face it, no, no, nobody wants to see developments going on. What, they, what you don't realize is the uh, three abutters, they just don't uh, want the project there. That's fine. 
they're to, they're to the south, uh, to the north. The ones to the south, they're all complaining with the uh, daycare center and everything else. They're encroaching on the property. One of them that, that said she has uh, 30 kids come in or whatever, she's 15, 20 feet on the property. Which, uh, but that's okay if they encroach, but we're, we're not supposed to uh, develop the property. The, um, the other ones to the, uh, to the south, they, they just don't want it being developed because it, it's kind of a sensitive situation between the landowner and what the three abutters actually did before the, uh, uh, before the, uh, the owner of the property. Because they actually, which I will probably have to uh, show the letter or show it to a higher authority, that basically they were saying when they didn't want the uh, is that under a legal issue right now? No, it's not a legal issue. It's just it's just just out in the open that um, you know that that he could get the property approved if if the, if they worked with them. So what does that mean? I mean, I you have an engineer, you have a peer engineer here. We're all working. We're doing this. I don't know how how they could have done something like that for Mr. Gonzales, but. You know, it's just a caveat out there. But anyway, the, this, this, 40, this 40B project, I thought I put a lot of thought into it, especially for the density, for the roadways coming in. They didn't want the road on their property. We have it self-contained. That's what you have. Any more of these details, I need site view coming uh, uh, down the center of the road or whatever, it's really a boot point. I, I mean, e either you like the project or, 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 or you don't. It doesn't either satisfy the board, which is fine, and I can accept that. But just to keep going on and having these hearings, weeks after weeks, and then, and then you guys are so busy, you can't get another hearing for another month and a half uh, for some calculation, it, it, it's, it's, really, it's really not necessary. I mean, it's, it's, if, if the project doesn't meet uh, whatever you're looking for, then, then, it, then it should be voted on. I mean, for, you know, for me to keep coming back and tweaking things, uh, dealing with the engineers on the phone with them, from some little minor situation. I mean, I, I think you think everything in there is self-contained. Everything is complete. If, it was, if this wasn't in any other area except Percival Road, if this subdivision was somewhere else, it would be approved as a regular subdivision. And, that, and that's the standards I was trying to put into this project, with the exception of maybe a couple of waivers like sidewalks and, um, and whatever else we had on in, in the length of the road with the T. Because you've got projects right now that are regular subdivisions where the T turnaround for the fire department is half the size of uh, what mine is, and that's approved. So uh, I think uh, it was well thought out. I think it's an excellent project. You know, you, you need affordable housing. I think what everybody gets confused with with affordable housing, they think it's low income. It's not low income. You know, you're looking at someone who's transferring here, maybe working for the town, maybe someone that, that's, a, that's a nurse that's relocating. That's what affordable housing is. It's not like you, you got somebody that's going to be on any subsidized housing that's coming in there and the single family homes, and as far as them saying you need one and two families, you're in real estate, when was the last time someone came in and told you I'm looking for a one bedroom house to buy? Right, Mr. Two Montero, bedroom house to buy. I, but just, just your, a, your concerns are heard well, from the board, just a, I, I don't want well, to be going No, no, I'm not gonna go into that at all, just, just a couple comments. So, um, I've been on multiple 40B hearings now, mm -hmm. more than I even wanna get involved with. Um, this hearing process is no different than any other one I've ever been on. Yeah. Peer reviews and everything else. Absolutely. Um, you talk about prolonging the process. The first two hearings we had, we couldn't even get the information from you. Now there was some technical errors and things like that. Yes, it was. But that's, but that's two meetings that we wasted. Yeah. And that prolongs the process. You mentioned something on Harness Lane about you know someone's encroaching, and it's okay. I don't think any of that's okay. I think if someone's encroaching on your land, you send a letter and you get them encroached. I don't see that anybody mm -hmm. here is saying it's okay to encroach. Mm -hmm. But to give the assumption that this is being treated different than any other 40B just isn't correct. Well, we that's... get the same comments, we get the same peer reviews, we get the ask for the same calculations. Absolutely. A lot of the information that you've been asked for isn't a surprise. Um, I understand that your engineer did have a conflict tonight, and I, it's too bad he did. But the whole purpose of having a meeting with your engineer and a peer engineer is that they can sit here actually together and go back and forth so we don't need to prolong to another hearing. Um, well, well, we, we, we've, we've done that talk, and the last conference call I had with him went over all of his notes. Well, tonight we just got an answer from Mr. Colley that said, yeah. yes, you're correct. This mm -hmm. part of the you know, planting stuff shouldn't be there. We do now to, need to mm -hmm. move it over. It's mm -hmm. going to take me another two weeks just to get that information done. 
He gets that done in another two weeks. He's going to have to submit to our peer engineer. Our peer engineer can't just say, okay, today it's fine. Some of these comments just came in on the 18th. Mm -hmm. And I give you know, our engineer a lot of credit that he even reviewed it. If it was me, I wouldn't have reviewed it on the 18th. I would have said, you're submitting the information too late. I need more time. So it's well, not that anyone's trying to prolong the process. No, no but the, the information we, we got to uh, uh, Mr. Shaheen and everything else what wasn't uh, two days I've before. Got a, I've got a, I've got a no, submitted that, here. No, that, him and I have been going over that for the last week. He, he sent that for just to be submitted. Mr. All, Mr. I can, all I can say is I'm just going on the file. Yeah. And so if you have other back and forths with him, I submit it to the file. Mm -hmm. Because all we get to see is the file. Mm -hmm. We don't get to talk to you. We don't get to talk to the engineer. We only get to see what's here in public. We get so much time to do it in advance when it's put up on a website or we get the information put in. It, so this is all we get to refer to. So it's, it's hard for us when you say, well, I've been going back and forth with him. We don't know that. And we don't know what the back and forth was. We just see what the outcome is of the situation. Well, my, my point with the back and forth going with him is, is that we, I, I answered a lot of his questions. So I don't mean back and forth where you just... No, I understand. But I'm just saying we don't, we don't have that. So when we, come, when we come to a meeting and somebody says, I don't have that information or I need a calculation, mm -hmm. Well, then we need a calculation okay. because that's all we're allowed to go by. If you mm -hmm. don't want us to go by anything, then you don't submit it. And we have to go by whatever's submitted. But we can only go over what's in a file. We can only go over what's coming in at the hearings. Mm -hmm. Your butters submit letters. You submit letters. You've got, you've got for or against. I just, I think saying that it's prolonged or this is, you keep saying this is different than, than this development or that development. Every development I've been on here has been exactly the same. The only difference we've had in the past is that when now we have peer engineers because our Falmouth Engineering Department does not have the time anymore to go through these processes because it takes so many man hours they don't have it. So the only real difference we have now is that. Other than that, there's, there's just there's no changes. All right. uh, three quick points, Mr. Montero, because I, I, looking at the time, we're, we're running late into the night on this project, but I do want to hit three quick points before we turn it over to public comment. Um, like Bob said, there have been some major revisions made in this project and progress is being made. I, we understand and acknowledge that you're reaching out with, with your development team and reaching out with peer with our peer engineer uh, and progress is being made in that respect. But uh, th there have been some setbacks, there have been major revisions made um, and that's why we're at this point now. Um, second to your point, I, I know that there's a number of uh, abutters and people who live nearby uh, who have presented uh, arguments against this project that's, you know, to be expected with a project of this size. Um, you, you did single a few of them out. Our policy regarding refraining from any, making any personal or derogatory remarks, that applies to members of the public and to the development team too. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to chastise you, but I'm just trying mm -hmm. to set the tone for the rest of the night and trying to move on. Okay. Uh, and also with regard to this board's uh, review of 40B projects, it's at the very core basis of 40Bs, we, as a board, we weigh uh, the local concerns versus the need for affordable housing uh, in this community. And at the, at its true, truest form, that is what 40Bs are all about. Um, I didn't, if something in the, if something in the file says something to the effect that affordable housing is not needed in this town, I don't think that's the position of this board. Of course, we are acknowledging the need for affordable housing, but again, we do need to weigh uh, local concerns that are valid uh, against the need for affordable housing. So that's what I'll say on that. I would like to move it along to public comment and uh, get along with the evening. Uh, so I will turn it over to public comment. If anyone out there has a question, comment, or concern regarding this project, please raise your hand. Attorney Wall. Thank you. Good evening, Chairman Hurry, members of the board. Um, I said a lot in the letter that Mr. Duggan um, graciously read, so I have a few brief comments that are more about what was said tonight um, than what was in my letter. The first I'd like to talk about is the waivers. Um, Mr. Montero just said the project is ready to be voted upon, but it was not until I think the very last hearing in July that we finally got a list of waivers that we had been asking for. Uh, since the beginning, which they're supposed to include in their application. And my point that I'd like to make tonight is, to what uh, Chairman Hurry just said, the board's role in a 40B application is to weigh local concerns as they are embodied in all the regulations and bylaws that the town has passed versus the need for affordable housing. And it's the applicant's burden 
to show you that each waiver that's being requested meets that balancing test. And what I've seen in all the 40Bs that I've been involved in for many decades now is the applicant provides some sort of written narrative to you to explain their rationale for the narratives, for the, for the waiver requests. And we haven't seen that, and the board hasn't had the benefit of any explanation from the, from the developer as to why these waivers are necessary. And I would respectfully submit that that's a needed part of the process, otherwise you're, you're groping in the dark. The second two points that I'd like to make have to do with the road, and then I'll rest. Um, the first point has to do with this change to common driveway. Um, up until last, up until the last meeting, the proposal before you was a 16 lot subdivision and the roadway that was providing access to the 16 houses was being discussed as a street and there were all kinds of discussions about subdivision regulations that apply to that particular road. Um, last hearing, they changed to a condominium, they erased the lot lines and now they're saying that it's a common driveway. Two points. So the common driveway definition in your bylaw says that it is a driveway that provides access to three or more lots and it is not a street. So the first point is this, when they went to from 16 lots to one, the roadway is only providing access to one lot. So therefore it simply doesn't meet the definition for common driveway and therefore can't be considered as such. And the second is it can't be a street. And that's the point that I made in my letter about the, what, what it's providing access to. So the regulations provide that a single family house has a presumed 10 trip per day. I know Mr. McKenzie cited another authority. I couldn't quite hear what he said, but he, he said it was 0.96 per day. I think this is going to be continued and it's something I'll come back with some more information for the board. But two, two points about it. First of all, um, I can't imagine that there can be less than one trip per day on a single family dwelling that has three bedrooms. Uh, just a personal note, I, I live in a house with my wife and three kids and two of them are drivers. I, I, we're much more closer to the 10 if not more per day. And so if you run those numbers, this street is going to be providing um, access for 160 trips per day. And to Mr. Zelinsky's point, I think these regulations are pretty old and that were not developed um, since the pandemic where people are working at home. And I would add to that before Amazon became a primary deliverer to, to neighborhoods and UPS and FedEx and Uber and DoorDash and Peapod. So there, there's going to be a significant demand on this street. It should be re reviewed as such. And why do my clients care so much? Because you remember my clients live on Percival Road up. They care so much because the developer is proposing to overlap the access road for the development with the road that my clients use every single day. And so I want to talk briefly about that. What I heard Mr. McKenzie start out by saying is that he's admitted that the plants that are shown in the layout of the road cannot be there. So they have to be removed. So this plan cannot be proceeded upon and the developer has to remove those plants from the way. But deeper than that, why, why are we talking about such crazy things as plants in a way to separate two roads that are overlapping each other? It's because the developer came forward with an application that presumed to use a road that they did not have the right to use. And now what they're doing is they're on the fly in an ad hoc manner coming up with different proposals. So they moved the road back onto their property, but then they ran into this problem, the conflict. And so their response to that was to put the plants in there that they legally can't put in there. And now we're going to go back to some other ad hoc thing that we heard about changing this part of the road up there or whatever. But the, bo the bottom line is the way that boards, all boards, the Zoning Board, Conservation Commission, Planning Board, you review plans. You don't review ideas. And so until they can come back with a plan, it's just an idea. And finally, the last point I want to make is why are my clients so interested in this is because this proposal is unsafe and it's something that if it were to be approved, they have to live with every single day. And so they've hired me to come up here to articulate their concerns and they're asking the board to consider the safety of other people that use this road as a means of access. And my three clients aren't the only ones. There are ones that go up on what is still called Old Mill Road and there are the ones on Percival Road that um, where it runs north-south where my clients live. And that's my comments for tonight. I thank you for your time. I know it's getting later. Um, before I yield, I just have a question for the board. Did Mr. Duggan, you were asking questions about
the plan that's attached to my letter. Does the board have any questions about the argument about why my clients have the right to use this part of uh, Percival Road, or, or is that understood? Or having said that, I can explain it in one second. The parcel up here was at one time one bigger piece and had access on this road as it went further north. And that, pro that parcel became subdivided. And so my clients own subdivided pieces of that bigger parcel. That bigger parcel is shown on that plan that I attached to my letter that has the frontage on Old Mill Road, which is now known as Percival. So that's why my clients who don't have actual frontage here have rights of access because they're part of the piece of land that did have access and was subdivided. And that's their means of access out to Trotting Park Road. Thank you. I'm available for any questions if you have any. Uh, attorney, well, it, it, could you or do you have any uh, a case law that provides um, credence to the common law driveway assertion that you made with your testimony? The assertion that the driveway is not a uh, the one lot, the one lot making it. Oh yeah, it's 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 in my letter. I've cited the so cases. So there's case law there. Oh uh, the, yeah, this isn't my uh, expression of opinion. This this is settled law, absolutely settled Thank law. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. No problem. Thank you. Anything else from the board? All right. Thank you, Attorney Wall. Thank you very much. Any other members of the public have any questions, comments, or concerns regarding this project? Sir? Thank you, Mr. Chair. My name's uh, Bill Overholtz. I live at 193 Percival Road. Uh, in a letter to ZBA dated September 4th, 2020, from Stephen Rafferty, Water Department Superintendent, concerning the village at Old Brick Kiln Development uh, at 511 Brick Kiln Road. Mr. Rafferty stated several reasons for not proceeding with the project, and I quote, the density is not in conformance with the town's watershed prote protection district zoning overlay. The overlays were created to protect the quality of drinking water sources within the town from the impacts of overdevelopment. The proposed project lies within the zone of contribution of Long Pond as defined in the Watershed Protect Protection District overlay for Long Pond. Long Pond is the town's major source of drinking water, providing approximately 50% of the water supply during the winter months and approximately 80% of the supply during summer months. And again, I'm quoting from his letter, the project's density will create a point loading of nitrogen, phosphorus, cleaning products, and pharmaceuticals, along with other household waste that are washed into the project septic system. And finally, the waste will flow via the groundwater directly to Long Pond, causing an incremental decay to the overall water quality of the pond. Project under review tonight is also in the Long Pond Watershed Protection District, <clears throat> and the reasons from Superintendent Rafferty for not proceeding with the Brook Kiln Road project also apply to this proposed development. Thalmouth Enterprise had a recent article on cyanobacteria, and I quote, the CDC considers cyanobacteria to be one of the most powerful known natural poisons. There are currently no remedies to counteract the effects. Now, as you've all read in the newspaper, several Falmouth ponds recently had algal blooms with tox toxic cyanobacteria. These resulted in closures and bans on using and accessing these bodies of water. Mayor's Pond, just down the street from Percival Road, was recently closed for a time. And you probably are all read, Grew's Pond, separated from Long Pond by only a road, was closed to swimming only a week ago because of a toxic algal bloom. And these are new occurrences. These are happening now in town regularly. It wasn't just the ponds I named. So dense developments around Long Pond will, will resort in one outcome, and that is contamination of our water supply. Uh, we cannot afford to shut down the, the new Falmouth treatment plant for even a day, as, I've document, or as Mr. Rafferty documented, especially in the summer because it's our primary source of drinking water. Uh, I and my neighbors are currently getting our water from wells, and no, there are no plans to mitigate if the wells are contaminated from the project that we're discussing tonight. So finally, basically, I'd just like the board to consider the big picture as it relates to the drinking water supply of Falmouth. And uh, 
we sincerely hope the ZPA will protect the town and make the right decisions relative to this project and other dense projects that are proposed for the Long Pond watershed. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Anyone else for public comment? Going once, going twice. All right, back to the board. I have uh, one question yeah, for any, the representative or the applicant. Sure. Uh, Mr. McKenzie, uh, with regards to the comments with uh, trips, housing, water quality, denitrification, um, I don't know if you recall, but I'm sure it's in the record. I had made a, a request uh, of the applicant early on in this process of, um, if you're familiar with the housing plan, they're screaming for one and two bedroom houses. And uh, the applicant was unwilling to even consider that at the time. Is that still your position? Yes, at this time it is because, again, like I told you, the density of the project is not six units per acre. It's only 2.6. It, it would be an economic uh, hardship for me to, set, to sell a one-bedroom house and then sell a one-bedroom market-rate house. Uh, the values would be down for the market-rate ones. But you, the, are, you are uh, um, aware of the, the housing plan for Falmouth and what, yes, what I some am, of the are? I, yeah, I am aware of the housing plan, but you've got to realize when they're talking – uh, one bedrooms and two bedrooms. They're not talking single family homes. They're talking apartments. Well, you, in your own testimony, you would yeah. spoke to the fact that we're trying to get workers and people yeah. people in yeah. here. Mm -hmm. um, so I just wanted to give you the opportunity. Yeah, no. To, uh, uh, to be honest with you, make I mean that statement. Yep, yeah, no, it's fine. I'm, what, I'm, what I'm getting at is because the, the 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 size of the project. If there was more units, then I I might be able to do it. But at, at this is the bare minimum that I, that I can work with. Uh, I can't afford to uh, uh, do any uh, one-bedroom houses. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right. Thank you. Any other follow-up questions? All right. Uh, Mr. McKenzie, looks like we are looking at a continuance. Um, just strongly encourage, um, you know, I, I understand Mr. Landers Colley's um, uh, you know, essentially being double booked his issues tonight, but uh, if he could reach out to our peer engineer and continue to work with him and, and whittle down the issues uh, that were outlined tonight, uh, along with the peer engineer uh, material that we received, I'm sure the board would appreciate that. Uh, anything else in terms of expectations for the next hearing? Have we requested condo docs or draft or proposed condo docs? I want to say there was a mention of it, but I'm not quite sure. Mr. McKenzie? We discussed with uh, Noreen previously on an email that usually the draft condo docs come after the approval uh, because it's, it's quite an expensive uh, undertaking to prepare condominium documents if, if the approval isn't uh, given. So we discussed that the regulatory agreement and the draft condo docs have to be approved by town council, but that usually comes following the issuance of the comprehensive permit. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to see some kind of uh, determination on that. Uh, shared easement is a legal opinion or however that takes place because that's a question that needs to be answered before we proceed with this right I mean ultimately that comes down to a issue of local concern right public, absolutely public safety absolutely uh, so would, would you be wanting a, a legal opinion from town well, council you'd hate, or? well you'd, you'd hate to approve a project without having that information and then and then it get tied up so I think we have to have a legal opinion from town council. We can get a legal opinion from the applicant, um, the abutters. But if we end up approving a project that has a legal implication, knowing it, going then we're in. liable because they've already brought it up. Everyone's brought it up. I mean, so. It was in testimony. It's been discussed as a not knowing whether it's a legal issue or not through testimony, not through us. Mr. McKenzie, I don't know if you have any. We'd be happy to get your legal opinion. We can probably get you one in probably three weeks. So you just forward one and then town council can yeah. forward us one. Um, you did mention last time that you were going to send something about how the condo percentage are based on uh, purchase price versus size. I think it was in Willowbend. So if you could still send that over. just. So I will take somewhere. a look and see if there's any, any changes under 40B because I know that that's always been a concern that they have less voting rights. and It's, it's just been an money. issue with, with some of the ones when they used to pass them and then when the, the affordable units had lower rights, they always get bumped out of decisions in the association. So. Uh, Noreen, the next
next available date I think we have is it is it 923 yes so your next two meetings uh, September 9 and 16 um, are both already booked with 40 B's that night so, so what do we have 23rd 20th? would be the first night and would we need an extension yes from the applicant yeah the current extension can, only goes till uh, today we can email that okay Mr. McKenzie, it looks like we're looking at a continuation of 923 and we'll also need you to uh, sign an extension. So if you're uh, not in September. 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 So if you're amenable to that uh, that date, we can get a get something signed from you and we'll go from there. Oh, and if we could, um, a, we got another list of a couple other waivers you had added. Could you just send over one page with all the current waivers? The, um, the waivers that I sent, I um, gave a memo to uh, Noreen. Well, when we went to a private road, I discarded the other waivers. Oh, okay. So I put those. If I add any more, uh, if anything changes, I'll add it. But so are these, those, are these all the current waivers? There's no other ones being asked for? That's okay. it, yeah. All right. Need a motion. Make so, a motion. You got it? Yes, a motion to continue to September 23rd. Second. All right, motion was made to continue to 923, made by Bob, second by James, was it? All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Thank you. Mr. McKenzie and your team, thank you. We will see you back here September 23rd, and we'll take a five minute break. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
right, we are coming back. Thank you. Uh, on to our new hearings for the night. We have application 56-21, Harwood, for Spinnaker Lane in Falmouth, requesting a special permit to raise the existing detached garage and rebuild with living space above. Mr. Chairman, I have to make a, a slight declaration. I may sure. or may not have put that septic system in that house years ago, so I just want to make that known. All right. If that makes any difference to you. It does not. All right, so no, no specific. You uh, may, may or may not have. Well, I mean, there was one in 2017. Very familiar to me. Yeah, there was one in 2017 that went in, so I don't know. Also, no, then it was, I was the one prior to that then, because yeah. I'm old. All right. All right, so application number 56-21, Brent D. and Sally R. Harwood, 9 Old Hickory Path, Westboro, Mass, have applied to the Zoning Board of Appeals for a special permit pursuant to sections 240-3C of the Code of Falmouth to raise the existing detached garage and rebuild with living space above on subject property known as Four Spinnaker Lane, Falmouth, Mass. Uh, for referrals, uh, from a health agent, he just wanted to send a note to clarify that this property has a six bedroom approved capacity and he sent an attachment. From CONCOM, the applicant has received the negative determination from Conservation Commission approving the above reference work. The approved plan of reference and permit is attached. Uh, we have the original referral from health, but we already have the confirmation it's a six bedroom system. Uh, fire department has no issues with the project is drawn. Uh, from engineering, uh, application was reviewed for impacts to public rights of way and public utilities. Spinnaker Lane is a private right of way in this area. Any connections or alterations to public utilities would require permission from the appropriate town department. The project must not direct any stormwater runoff to public property abutters or public right of way. We recommend the board add a condition that requires the addition of dry wells or storm infiltration measures at a minimum. From the water department, the plans show the water service in main as required. The proposed service is a one inch tapping into the existing six inch main, which is allowed. The meter for the new service must be inside the building, not in a meter pit. Planning board, no comment. And that's it. All right. And Attorney Clark, before we pr proceed, uh, just based upon Scott's disclosure, I, I assume that you're all you're okay with that. I'm perfectly fine with that, especially since I don't believe it's a system that's currently in place. Yeah. So. All right. And there's only four of us, so if we were to come to a decision, it would have to be unanimous. Understood. All right. All right. We're ready. Right uh, good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board. For the record, my name is Kevin Clower. I'm an attorney with Ahmed Clower Law Firm here in Falmouth. And I represent the applicants, Brent and Sally Harwood, the owners of Four Spinnaker Lane. Mr. Harwood is here with us this evening. Uh, they're seeking permission to raise and rebuild the non conforming garage on this property. Four Spinnaker Lane is located on the southern side of Clinton Avenue, uh, adjacent to the Belvedere Plains neighborhood. It's a large lot for the area, it's over 24,000 square feet, and it's located in the residential C zoning district. Presently, presently, this lot contains a five-bedroom single-family dwelling with a detached garage. Uh, the total footprint of those structures is just, over th uh, just under 3,500 square feet. The garage is non-conforming to side yard set setback being 6.7 feet where 10 is required. Otherwise, the garage meets setback requirements and the dwelling and the garage combined conform with all lot coverage requirements. The Harwoods purchased this property in 2017 and have been taking steps to improve it ever since. The dwelling itself was uh, the subject of a special permit in 2017, allowing for uh, some minor alterations to the footprint as well as some interior renovations. The Harwoods have uh, adult children who, who visit often, uh, and those children are forming families of their own at this point. Actually, one of Mr. Harwood's sons is getting married this weekend. Uh, and they've realized that they need more space. So they're seeking to make some changes to the property to accommodate that, to increase the usefulness and the design for the family. They propose to raise and rebuild the existing garage and replace it with a new garage, which will have some additional living space above. Uh, though the garage is expanded, the lot coverage by structure will remain conforming. It'll be uh, only 16%, where 20% is allowed by right. 
the lot coverage by structures, paving, and parking will likewise be conforming at 17.3, uh, well below the 40% that's allowed by right. The non-conforming side yard setback will remain unchanged. The ridge height will be conforming at 22 feet. Uh, the bedrooms, while they will increase, uh, will s the, the septic system is still able to accommodate that. The septic is designed for six beds and installed in 2017, uh, as noted in the health referral uh, and confirmed by Scott McGann. Based on the room count, that six-bedroom system is more than adequate to address the addition of the uh, new bedrooms. Under 243C, pre-existing non-conforming structures may be changed by a special permit, provided that they're not substantially more detrimental than what exists. The board is asked to consider the standards of 240, 216, and whether that alteration creates any new dimensional non-conformities, impairs views of vistas from public ways, and reasonably conforms to the neighborhood. Here, we have no new non-conformity being created. Uh, the existing non-conformity is unaffected. Uh, the lot coverage by structures as well as structure paving and parking will remain conforming. And there's no impacts to views and vistas, and it will remain in line with the neighborhood. The proposal will have a significant improvement to the usefulness for the applicants and won't create any new dimensional nonconformities. I do believe that it meets with the standards of 243C and 242.16. I believe the board can and should grant a special permit for this, and I'd be happy to address any questions that you might have at this time. Good. Thank you, Attorney Clower. We'll turn it to board questions. James, anything? Clower, 2017, what was the bulk increase to this property, the first uh, special permit? Uh, not much at all. I don't think there was any um, bedrooms or, or square footage really added. I think it was just uh, the, the decks were redone, the patio was redone, the covered porch was redone uh, and changed. But uh, I don't believe that there was anything really added to the second floor. Yeah. The initial special permits stipulated five bedrooms, is that correct? It did say, uh, it said that there were five bedrooms proposed. I don't believe it was a limitation of five bedrooms. It just said per plan. That's what was approved. Yeah. And there was a six bedroom system that was installed. Anything else, James? I realize the Board of Health said it's adequate. This is going to be seven bedrooms for the purpose of the record. Uh, in terms of the record, yes, it'll be seven bedrooms. Just through you, Mr. Chairman, to the clerk. Was there any opposition filed from the neighbors? I do remember one person in support. Uh, I didn't see any opposition in the file, and then Scott McGann sent all the calculations on why seven bedrooms are allowed on a six-bedroom system. Was there one letter of support in the file? Sorry to make you dig. That's okay. And, uh, I, I'm not sure, but I just, while well, Mr. Dugan is looking for that, I will just uh, note, and echoing what Scott had said in the referral, um, bedrooms can be counted one of two ways in terms of Title V. I'm not making issue. Oh, yeah. No, I'm just, yeah, yes. I just, I wanted to state that for the, uh, for the record, exactly. Um, I don't see one, but. Okay. No objections. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Thank you. All right, Scott. Nothing. All right. Bob. No, just confirm, what was the ridge height, 22? 22 feet, yes. Um, no cooking facilities in the garage nope. unit? And property will still be a single family? Will still be a single family. <laughs> All I have. All right. And for myself, uh, new driveway being proposed? There's an expansion of the existing driveway. Okay, so it, will that be shell as well, or? Yes, I, I do. I assume the shell drive, that's existing. Yes, so the shell drive exists, and I'm sure they'd want it to match what's there. And you're showing exterior uh, egress and exit off of uh, the balcony side? Yes. So there's interior and exterior egress. And are there three garage bays being proposed? So there's, there's, there's three garage bay facades. Uh, there's two actual garage bays, and one is, is going to be used as a gym space. It's still unfinished. It's still un not habitable, but it's uh, intended for, gy for gym space. What do you mean the facade is what's... It, there'll be, it, it'll, it'll be... Uh, the front will appear to be a third garage bay. Just but for it, aesthetics? Yes. Sure. Okay. All right. Uh, that does it for me. Any follow-up questions from the board? All right, members of the public, any questions, comments, or concerns regarding this project? Seeing none, back to the board. Motion to close. All right, motion to close made by Scott. Is there a second? Second. Second by James. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Hearing is closed. No more testimony may be taken. How would the board like to proceed? Motion to approve all the conditions. All right, so I'll give that approval to Bob and Scott. I think so. Yep, to give you the second. All right, findings? So 240-3C, 240-216, not substantially more detrimental. Um, 
Owners have a growing family, so need the additional uh, living space over the garage. The health department sent a referral explaining uh, why with the room count, a six bedroom septic system is allowed for the seven bedrooms as proposed. Uh, lot coverage remains uh, yeah, conforming. Lot coverage at 16%, which is under the 20 is allowed. Uh, lot coverage, uh, structure parking and paving, 17.3. No butter opposition. And that, that only non-conformity is that yeah, 6.7 off right. the side? Yeah, side yard non-conformity will remain at 6.7. Ridge Heights uh, remains conforming. Projects remains in keeping conforming. with the neighborhood architecture. It certainly is. Uh, you can put that the, even though it looks like a third, a three bay garage, the third bay is actually a false bay for the additional living space. Uh, meter, uh, meter oh, that's going to be on conditions, right? Meter has to come inside, water meter. Yep, it'll be on conditions, but uh, we can note that uh, was it the water department that made that referral? Uh, Enhances the utilization of the property? Got in keeping. So since it's a false bay, we don't need to approve a three-bay garage, correct? No. no, but I think it's important to make, important a, to make a finding. So make a finding that it's a two, a it's a two-bay garage with Describe a third a facade, facade bay for architectural purposes. Mm -hmm. uh, no cooking facilities per testimony. Property will be used as a single family per testimony. Proofs be not more detrimental. So two, you already said two. Four, yeah, two, uh, the two four two sixteen, mm -hmm. all the uh, aspects under it. All right. Anything else for findings? Good. Conditions. Uh, per plans, uh, seven bedroom uh, max. Water meter does come inside. Yeah, water meter. If uh, when they put a new water meter, will have to be inside the unit. Uh, no cooking facilities. Property to only be used as a single family. Can we back up to, um, I'm sorry, uh, to uh, findings that the driveway will be extended, uh, altered slightly and extended? Yep. Can we get in the uh, improved septic system back in 2017? Yeah, I would put that as well. Uh, upgraded septic system yeah. uh, in 2017. And you weren't a part of that? Just no. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> And I would list in the findings the um, the health department's reasoning for the septic system because this comes up once in a while. Yep. Yep. And that he's basing it on rooms, including existing and proposed versus just existing. Mm -hmm. All right. So back to conditions. Anything else? Uh, no, we got the times. kitchen. Uh, yeah, work hours that we always use. Uh, all equipment, uh, construction equipment and supplies to be kept on site. Which will be easily done. That's a pretty big lot. It's for a that big area. site. Anything else? No, it's 22 so. feet, so we don't need a height, sir. No. no, no. We did note the height in the findings? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Through testimony, they stated it was conforming. All right. So that was a motion to approve with conditions made by Bob and seconded by Scott. Oh, we have to just add oh. in there the um, uh, health department that the uh, there must be dry, there must be uh, gutters to drywalls. Yeah. For room runner. All right. So include that as a finding. Include that as a finding and a condition. condition. Yeah. All right. So there we have it. That was a motion to approve uh, with conditions made by Bob, seconded by Scott. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. James, that was an aye. That was an aye. All right. Passes unanimously. Thanks, guys. Thank you. So I'd like to make a motion to actually take one item out of order to take uh, application 5821 Nolan. Because it's, it's just it's a, it's a kind of a simple application. All right, so the motion's being made to take application 58-21 Nolan, 140 Elm Road, Falmouth, out of order. Yeah. Second. All right, so motion was made by Bob, second by Scott. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Okay. All right. Are the Nolans here? And Attorney Clower, you're representing the Nolans? I do. All right, so f application 58-21 Nolan, 140 Elm Road, in Falmouth, requesting a uh, special permit to raise and rebuild the pre-existing non-conforming barn structure. Bob? So application number 58-21, David F. and Jacqueline B. Nolan, 140 Elm Road, Falmouth, Mass. is applied to the Zoning Board of Appeals for a special permit pursuant to sections 240-3C of the Code of Falmouth to raise and rebuild the pre-existing non-conforming barn structure on subject property known as 140 Elm Road. For referrals. Uh, from engineering, the application was reviewed for impacts to public rights of way and public utilities. Elm Road is a public right of way in this area. No alterations are proposed to the right of way. Any changes within the right of way would require filing a permit with the engineering division. 
Any connections or alterations to public utilities would require permission from the appropriate town department. The project must not direct any stormwater runoff to public property of butters or public rights of way. We recommend that the board add a condition that requires the addition of dry wells or stormwater infiltration measures. Uh, and where this work area is adjacent to Elm Road, we request that construction measures be included for the project along the work area adjacent to Elm Road to protect the town right of way. We recommend the plans be revised to include a demarcated limit of work in form of silt fence, wattles or straw bales and include a construction entrance. All work should be done from the parcel and not from the town right of way. And see example below, there's a depiction. Uh, we defer to the board if the construction plan details can be produced prior to issuance of the building permit or if a revised plan should be submitted prior to approval. Conservation has no comment at this time as the project appears to fall outside conservation jurisdiction. Um, from Cathala Water, the water main and service is shown in the plans as required. The existing service includes a meter pit which will have to be abandoned. The new structure will have to include the new water meter inside the building. The existing home associated with this building has its own water service currently. No comment from assessors. Health has no issues with the project. Uh, planning, no comment. Fire department has no issues with the project is drawn. Uh, there was a letter in the file uh, dated August 5th. Dear Terrence Hurry, thank you for your letter uh, describing the application 558-21 David F. And Jacqueline B. Nolan to raise and rebuild a pre-existing non-conforming barn structure located on their property at 140 Elm Road, Falmouth. And this would be they would have gotten this from the zoning department. I have lived next door to David and Jacqueline Nolan for 11 years and find them to be wonderful people and neighbors and model citizens of Falmouth. David and Jackie have very high standards and take exceptional care of their home and property for their own benefit while always considering their neighbors. I not only approve of the raise and remodel, I am looking forward to the process and completion. Uh, please grant them this application. They are good people and have saved Falmouth through philanthropic work volunteering and improving them in the Moore's neighborhood um, as a disclosure because I didn't read this before just so everyone knows I did sell the home at 172 Elm Road to Claudia and Joel Neymar um, but I don't it wouldn't affect my ability to be on this did you like them <laughs> yeah so far so good I haven't met many I haven't liked so <laughs> <laughs> they bought it so yeah <laughs> It's a nice house. So I suppose if we're calling that a disclosure, Bob, and I'm not worried Clower, about that you're one. fine with that. Yeah, I just I didn't read this before, and I just saw the name. Well, like if he's doing it, I have to do it too. And I, I worked horses out of that barn 40 years ago when oh. Camby Lawrence owned it. So not much has changed, well, Scott. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so the photos I saw, I agree. So uh, have you been there? I mean, no, I was looking at the photos of the yeah, flowers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing's so. changed in 40 years. Yeah, so I'm still buying all the time on the bike path. All right. All right. So with those two disclosures yeah. being made, Attorney Clower, you're not concerned with those Surprise. disclosures. It's, uh, four of us, like we said before, mm -hmm. uh, unanimous decision would be understood. Made. Understood. Very good. All right. Go right uh, ahead. Again, for the record, my name is Kevin Clower. It's funny how these things tend to group together. We have two very similar uh, applications back to back. I'm effectively going to say a lot of the same things I said last time because uh, they're true for this application as well as the last one. Here, I am representing David and Jackie Nolan, the owners of 140 Elm Road. They are seeking permission to raise and rebuild the pre-existing non-conforming garage on their property. This lot is just shy of one acre. It's 42,146 square feet in the RB zoning district. Presently, there is a five-bedroom single-family dwelling with a detached garage, garage slash barn. I don't know what we're calling it exactly. Um, on a footprint of just over 4,000 square feet. The garage is non-conforming to front yard setback being 1.2 feet where 25 is required and side yard setback being 0.9 feet where 10 is required. Um, the combined structures, the, the, the barn and the house, comply with lot coverage requirements. Uh, the applicants have owned this property since 1998 and have been in Falmouth since long before then. They are, um, at the risk of embarrassing them, stalwarts of the community, both professionally and civically, uh, and as noted, do, do a lot of great work philanthropically, uh, which I just think is worth noting. Um, currently, the existing barn is in significant disrepair. The Nolans are seeking to raise that building, uh, reduce its size, and to make it a useful, attractive space. So the proposed raising the building and building it on a smaller footprint, the ridge height will be 19 feet. Uh, the overall square footage will be reduced from 895 square feet down to 668. Uh, if, if, 
if, if approved, the lot coverage by structure will be only 9.25%, well under the 20% allowed. Uh, and the lot coverage by structures, paving, and parking will be 13.78%, uh, less than half of the 40% that is allowed. The non-conforming front yard setback will be virtually unchanged. There is a minor difference from 1.7 to 1.9, but I'm not going to call that an improvement at the risk of being chastised. Um, the non-conforming side yard setback is improved uh, dramatically. It goes from 0.9 feet to 19.1 feet, so that will be eliminated entirely as a non-conformity. Uh, as I noted, the proposed ridge is 19 feet, which is uh, conforming as it is under the 22 feet allowed by right. There is no change to the bedrooms as there's no habitable space proposed in this structure. Uh, as was noted, 243C allows for pre-existing non-conforming structures to be changed by special permit, provided that they're not substantially more detrimental than what exists. And you're asked to consider whether it creates any new dimensional non-conformities impairs views of vistas and reasonably conforms to the neighborhood. Uh, here, as I, I've noted, there is no new nonconformity created. The existing nonconforming front yard setback is, is essentially unaffected. The nonconforming side yard setback is eliminated entirely. Uh, there has been a barn at this location, uh, this close to the curb, for quite a while. Um, more than 40 years, more than 60 years, I, I would wager. Um, so I think it's fair to say that this will remain in line with the neighborhood as, as it's certainly come to be known. This is a significant improvement over the existing conditions. It eliminates a dilapidated structure that um, at some point will become unsafe. It will be reduced in size. It improves or eliminates the existing nonconformities. I think it clearly meets the standards of 243C and 242.16. I'm not aware of any adverse effects that would overbalance uh, the benefits of outlined. So for these reasons, I believe that you can grant the special permit. And I ask that you would, and I'd be happy to address any questions that you might have. All right. Thank you, Attorney Clower. Board questions? Bob? Uh, so no, no heat? No. That's it. All right. Scott? No, into, is there a wall that backs that up? Uh, it actually it, it's built into um, into the bank, um, so there there is there's obviously a structure back there. I'm talking so about a stone wall. Is there a stone wall between? No, I believe it's okay. built right into the bank. No, it's good. All right, Chase? actually, kind of it's kind of cool the way it's it's built yeah, that no way. Right. Yeah. No questions. All right, so, uh, Attorney Clower, you said you weren't quite sure what to call it, barn, garage, whatever it may be. What's the proposed use? It's going to be oh, it's it's going to be a garage and, and storage. All right. Let's call it garage. Yeah. yeah. All right, that does it for me. Uh, members of the public, any questions, comments, or concerns regarding this project? Seeing none, back to the board. Mr. Chair, motion to close. Second. Motion to close by Scott, second by James. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And how would the board Mr. like Chairman, to proceed? motion to approve with the conditions. conditions. Second. Second. Right. Let me start it off, Bob. Sure. Start it off. Who got, who got, who got that? The second. Oh, sorry. I'm going I'm to oh. give it to you, James. <laughs> Scott um, and James. 243C, uh, 242.16. Uh, greatly improved some setbacks uh, to dilapidated structure. So, so just list on the setbacks. So the the yeah. the one the 19.1 certainly. Yeah. Is so the side yard setbacks going from um, from nine feet to 19.9 feet. I mean, point nine feet. The front yard setback is staying the same at 1.2. The um, the footprint's being reduced. No habitable space. Yeah. As to, on 240-216, just add not substantially more detrimental. Uh, currently, a barn going to be used as a garage slash barn, I guess. There's no heat. No opposing. No opposing uh, letters of opposition. One and there is a letter of support, of support by an abutter, direct abutter. Uh, ridge height, 19 feet. Uh, lot coverage uh, by structure is only 9.25. Structures parking and paving, 13.78, so well under both. And was reduced, right? Was thought. reduced, yeah. The structure will be... Uh, more pleasantly appealing yeah, and safer. All right. Conditions? Do we have to propose dry wells for that? Oh yeah. Uh, put in the findings, the comments from the comments from engineering uh, regarding the construction, uh, along with that copy of that depiction that they listed. Yeah. Um, if they're going to be having a water service, it has to be a separate water service, and that has to be located within inside the garage slash barn. And they can uh, do that with the water department. 
all construction limit or vehicles and materials limited to the property mm -hmm. off of Elm Road. Yeah. Uh, working hours. Yeah, so for conditions, we can add the working hours per plans. They're going to have to revise the plan to show the... Uh, they're going to have to revise the plan uh, to show the construction measures, uh, which will include a demarcated limit of work in the form of a silt, fen silt fence, wattles, or straw bales. Does it, does it quote all three? No, they can, um, they so can choose, and then it, it will include a construction entrance, all work to be done by the parcel, no work to be done from the town right of way. Um, but they need to add that to the plans. So if we, if we require silt fence and straw wattle instead? I think we could just put um, a demarcated... So silt fence. Ta demarcated limit of work must be put in with either a silt fence, wattles, or straw bales. That way they can decide whatever they want to use. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, construction hours. Uh, no habitable space. Uh, no heat only because I think if they put heat, they may consider it a bedroom with health. Uh, but the, it will have water service, possible water service. All right. Is that that? That does it? Yep. All right. So that was a motion to approve made with conditions by Scott, second by James. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Thank you. Everyone, thank you very order. much. Really appreciate your time tonight and appreciate you taking us out of order. Thank you. Thank Nick. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, is he leaving? Tony Clower, before you leave? Don't leave. <laughs> you lost your booty. So okay. you're ambulating better? It was. It was Get a brace on. Huh? I know, but you know what it was from? I found out. From driving that big pickup. Oh, you okay. had to push the, the accelerator yeah. down harder. Get it, getting in and out of it? Aggravated as Achilles. <laughs> Thank you. Night, Kev. So we just need um, Steve's. Thank you. <laughs> oh, okay, I see. Which one are you? Oh. Do you know? Yeah. Is that you? No. Mm -hmm. That's me. Uh, so okay. Should I just click on the ones I want? Yep, so just click on... Okay. Oh. Scroll down. Okay. Thank you. All right. So up next we have application 57-17M, North Star Place LLC, 123 Brick Trail Road in East Falmouth, requesting a modification to comprehensive permit 57-17 to allow modification to previously approved plan. So application number 57-17M, North Star Place, LLC, 286 T Ticket Highway, Unit B, East Falmouth, Mass, has applied to the Zoning Board of Appeals for modification of comprehensive permit 57-17, pursuant to Mass General Laws Chapter 40B, to allow modifications to previously approved plans, the subject property is 123 Brickkiln Road, East Falmouth, Mass. Oops. Uh, for referrals, uh, engineering notes. Engineering did right. We are in receipt of the requested modifications to permit 5717. Located at 123 Brick Kiln Road, a.k.a. Brick Kiln Place. We have no ob objects to the requested modifications and have no further comments. And that is the only... Uh, that is the only referral that we have. And we have no submitted uh, letters. All right. And for the applicant, we have... Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Nick Marioni for the applicant. Uh, during the course of the construction, various things, the project's completely built out and occupied. And I'm sorry, could you just be a little louder? I just, I just couldn't hear you. This, this doesn't. No. It does not amplify. And we all seem to be having soft voices the, tonight. 
the, uh, the project is built out and occupied, fully occupied. And we're trying to get our final payment from the grant from the uh, Falmouth Affordable Housing Fund. And inspections were done by uh, the ZBA, by Noreen for the ZBA and Scott Schluter for the DPW. Comments were fed back to us. The majority of those uh, issues were dealt with. There are some items that during the course of construction came out different than the approved plans. Uh, they've been reviewed and uh, of the 11 items on here, I believe uh, Scott Schluter and has commented back that he's okay with the changes we made. One of the items on there was not on the approved plan. It's a, a request to add a maintenance building onto the site, a 10 by 16 maintenance building, so we can put screens in it. And um, right now we're parking the, the rider lawnmower uh, on the site it, uh, and covering it with a top rather than having a building to put it in. Same thing with the, the snow plow. Uh, so there's, there's maintenance items that we'd like to be able to put in the building uh, so that they're not sitting outside. So I guess the, 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 the process would be that you would look at the 11 items that we had on here and uh, address them. So I guess I'll turn it to the board. All right, I just, ask, board? just ask one question before sure. we do it. Uh -huh. um, so, Mr. Mayor, so in your letter you wrote that, um, again, many items have been completed, and as so often happens, you're actually performing the work. Site conditions dictate that some things need to be done differently yet achieve the same intended result. So when we go over these 11 items um, listed, what were the site conditions that required that these items be changed? Well, i give you an example on one of them, for instance. the. Uh, This is this is a, the pump chamber. It shows a parking space here. That's the, the cover to the pump chamber for the septic system. And that's when you first drive in, right? That's, that's when you first drive in entrance. on the left, yes. And we, th we thought that with the conditions on site, it made more sense to leave that area not as a paved parking space, but to put the parking spaces to the side of it and leave that as just an area where the pump chamber is and landscape around it, which is what we, which is what we did. So do you still have seven parking spaces there? No, did we have, make we it have small? six there. And are those demarcated at all? They are. Uh, another example of site conditions. Oh, I don't know how to move this thing. Oh, yeah, I do. I got it. The, the approved plan shows the, the catch basin set in the curb like, like that. The way it was actually built was the road width is the exact road width, but the catch basins ended up out here and the curbing goes straight on both sides. The, the drainage functions the way it's supposed to function, it just looks different. All of the, all of the units show sidewalks in front of them. This blue, the blue is the sidewalk that was shown on the plan. What we ended up doing was bringing the pavement for the driveways right up to the, to the f foot of the stairs going into the units. So it essentially acted as a sidewalk in front of the units except for the seven or eight foot section that's landscaped shown right here 
So, so on, so on that one, for example, what's the site condition that required that you do that versus put in the sidewalk? Oh, it, it just by pulling the sidewalks, by pulling the pavement. No, I understand that. I'm just asking. You said these were based on site conditions. So oh, I'm trying to. The site condition showed that that we had a space between the end of the driveway and the bottom of the stairs. So. So that's that's a that's a plan though versus a site condition. So the plan that was approved had required a sidewalk in front of each building right and then you just you decided to take the sidewalk but but it's not the actual site conditions that force okay. you to take yeah. that that's what i'm trying to get right. at it's we not did, a site condition just, yeah. issue it was it was yes it was decided that that do you know why those sidewalks had been um asked for do i know why what I'm why those sidewalks had been asked to be put there no i don't i don't i don't i they, they go nowhere except to the two units. So one of the issues was that if you asphalt directly into a step or a building, there's nothing to buffer those parking spaces or cars from the buildings themselves. So for example, when you pull in, I visited the site today, and uh, I saw one vehicle actually on inches from the gas meters. I saw in. that today too. That's because right. yeah. again, they you know they're backing into the space and the asphalt goes over up the building. I saw other vehicles that had backed up completely, almost on the steps of the entrance, so that it would be hard for someone to actually get on the steps. So that that was one of the issues because I was on this that there's a demarcated area like that. So when any of these changes were made how long ago were they made is it recent no or? so so what was the are we talking two years now oh no not two years ago the they the pavement was done uh i would say last september or just after labor day so about a year ago when the binder was put in so when that pavement was done why wasn't the board notified that you were changing the plans I don't know. The the um, if I could just add a little bit. To you understand that's not a very good answer. I do understand that, but I'm I'm here trying to clean up the problem. I wasn't. You're asking for you're asking for forgiveness. You're not trying to clean up the problem. I mean, let's be realistic here. Well, this there is true. Been, there should have been a time when this was going on. By the rule of your special permit, I'm sure there was a line in there that said any changes to this plan has to come back before the board, either administratively or a new hearing. So coming back with 11, 11 significant changes after the horses run out of the barn isn't cleaning it up. Just so you know that, right? I'm asking a question. I see your point. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Sure. Anything else, Bob? Or? No, let me go to the other items. I just want to know, you know, again, each one, the, the request is these way, these are being asked for because it was the site conditions that dictated these must be changed. I can understand with the drainage, that could be a site condition. I do not understand how landscaping, removal of sidewalks, even some of the changes to the buildings that we're not discussing right now, I don't understand how a site condition on a flat level piece of land affects any of those. So when you write a letter that says, we're asking these because of, most of these have nothing to do with site conditions. When I went out to the site today, and again, item number six. So on item number six, where the curbing wasn't installed on the side of the parking area throughout the project. So when I came around the cul-de-sac, where they've changed the drainage, because that open space is so wide and there's no sign and no warning and you can't see it, I literally almost drove off the corner into the ditch because they've left such an open space there. There's no, you can't see it. And if I'm trying to pull off to the side of the road like I was so I could see the project, I assume I'd feel or see a berm or something, and there wasn't anything. On building number eight when I was there, 
that building has changed from the original plans. Now I think it's fine, it, it, uh, enlarging it might be okay, but they have changed that to an overhang of the foundation on both sides. And that overhang now completely covers all the window wells. You have no access. You have about a foot because of the overhang. That wasn't asked for in the plan. On item number six, again, when I was on the approval for this, that was a play area that was specifically asked for and on the plans. Directly across where you see fence dumpster enclosure for turn in for what you're gonna remove where you wanted the dumpster. Over there you have a large asphalt pad with a um, portable basketball hoop in it right on the cul-de-sac. And then away from that directly against the fence, there's another poured asphalt pad with another portable basketball hoop. That's not on these plans. The entrance where you said arborvitae or fencing, which sometimes can be very minor, there's no such thing as a site condition that we decided a fence will fit here, but a arborvitae won't. The plantings, so when I was on these hearings, there was a lot of comment to make sure the entrance looked very pleasing. And now we're looking to waiver and get rid of all the plantings at the entrance. That makes no sense to me at all because the plantings on the buildings are extremely minor. The very small foundation shrubs, you know, we've had a bad weather year, so they've probably been affected much, but there is minimal landscaping. So it just, it seems odd to me that someone would suddenly say, we need to change the landscaping in front. We want to take it out. We need to change the plantings that went through permits. We've decided to move the play area. We, it still isn't being asked for in this tonight. So you don't even have that on here. That's on the original plan. The asphalt pieces that are out there that have been poured against that fence across the other side, those don't even appear on the plan. I don't even know what that's for. The, the which? So when you're driving in at the cul-de-sac, across from where the play area used to be, there is a large asphalt square right on the cul-de-sac with a basketball hoop in it. Okay. And then if yes. you walk no, through you. that towards the fence, there is another large asphalt pad at the fence. And you know, you noticed the car that was near the gas meter? Yes. That's a fire hazard. These are rental units. They're connected. The reason the, uh, also the reason those little uh, sidewalks are in there for the first place is because with no sidewalk there, you're parking a single car and you have about a three quarter space now behind it. So you can't pull in straight, you'll be into the street. So when I was there, you had two cars parked in and you had a third car parked horizontally blocking in both the other cars because there's just enough of a space to kind of get in. I'm not following that. So that first unit, about which building eight, where the, the space is wide. Building eight. No, what they're doing is because there's no sidewalk. Now the driveways are a little bit longer. Yeah. So now when they're pulling their cars all the way up to the building, there's a three-quarter maybe car space length left behind them once you pull up the building. So you can't pull in straight, or you your back end would be in the street. So when I was there, people were parking another car horizontally, blocking in the other two cars that are actually parked on the buildings. Okay. So I just, I just don't understand where it's a year, and, and I know you're coming in now, but this is a project that was done a year ago. All the building occupancies were given out because the town wanted to give them out. They wanted to make sure people could occupy these buildings. The town gave, like you hear, because of the monies. The town gave extra monies because they wanted this project to go in. They wanted to have rentals and it's a 100% project. But with everything that's happened, I just think it's very disingenuous to ask for these type of changes and still not have stuff on here that's been changed. It, it's just not there. It doesn't, it doesn't, the plans, if I was reviewing this, I went in the file today, I'm like, well, where is this? This is gone. If somebody pulled this plan right now in Building 8, there is nothing showing that Building 8 is different from the other buildings. And it's my understanding that it was probably because they needed something for handicapped space, they needed more space. 
So instead of adding another pad or coming out for the foundation, they just built over all the window wells. The uh, gutters that are on like building eight, the landscaping areas in front are actually angled toward the building. So where is all that water going? It's going all back. So I just, I just think asking for this after a year and still not showing what's actually in existence is just throwing it in the face of a board that, that went through all these processes to make these projects go good. Assuming, again, the occupancies wouldn't be done until, until everything was completed correctly. In this case, the town decided to give the occupancy permits and now instead of finishing the job the way you were supposed to on the plans, you've decided, well, I'm just gonna take everything out and we'll go with that. I just, I don't understand it in something like this. I just, it doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. But I would like to know where the basketball hoops are. What is that? Is that asphalt area where you're gonna try to put the the dumpster, because you don't have a parking area and a dumpster out there off that cul-de-sac. You've got one or the other. We, we have a parking area. I mean, right now you've got one pullover area, one, that's long. It's a On the plan you're showing two. We have a parking area for three spaces. We do so, not put the dumpster pad in to the right of it. So, so, so what's shown here that says fence, dumpster enclosure would turn in for the truck, that actually, that was actually never even put in that asphalt. Uh, at the, back here? Yeah. Correct. No, no, the asphalt, the parking area is in. That's what, that's what you're seeing in front of the- uh, But it's not where it shows on the plan. No. So what they've done is they've moved that area to where that dumpster pad is already. Right. And when I went out there, none of the parking spaces are demarcated. Oh, you mean painted? How else do you know where to park in these spaces? It's like a free-for-all. I mean, you've got people parking horizontal versus going straight in. That's why I asked how many spaces are still in those parking areas, because there's no way to tell. <clears throat> the, first, the first area coming in that you show, I, don't th I think you might be able to get four cars in that space. I do not believe you could fit in six. And we show seven. Where you took that first area when you first come in, I do not believe you got six parking spaces there. I just don't believe it. I, I think what's there now is actually less than, than what shows on that plan. I mean, I took photos when I went out there. I assumed I'd go out there and everything would just be as, as it was shown on this plan. So I honestly was surprised when I went out there with this. And I was finding things that were there that don't even show up on the plan that you're asking changes for. I mean, where, where's the play area going to be? That's a requirement. This, this is supposed to be the play field here, but where? where well, that was actually supposed to be the drain, the drainage field, not that, the play field. That's the that's the uh, that's the uh, leaching field. Yeah, so that's the leaching the field. Grass field that was supposed so to be that drained. whole yellow area that's up there, do you have highlighted yellow? That actually was the play area on the plans. That's a, that's a detention pond. I know it is now, and it's in a gully with stones. If you look at the plans, that was the play area. Um, I, don't, I can show them to you in the I file. I don't think so. They're marked in the file. It's, it's a big, it's colored in. You, you guys submitted them. You colored it in and actually wrote in play area because there needed to be an area out there. And the reason it's not on the other side is because you decided you wanted to put a dumpster there. That's, what the, that's the way they approved plans out with a dumpster over here. I looked at them at the, Noreen was with me. I pulled them right up. Yeah, the dumpster was there, and across from it was a play area. The drainage was all different. So instead... I, I, think, I think there's some confusion here. This, 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 there is a the plan we built off of. This is a, a drainage area. We don't have a copy here, right, with the, the one showing the play area in the actual... Do we have a copy with us of the actual approved? probably at the yes. office. So when you get a chance, just look at the approved plan that's in the office. And what it's gonna show, it's gonna show that all that drainage area in yellow is a play field. Like a ball field, it's a play field. I'll get back to it because I- No, I know, it's a play field. But I also wanna to add to this that 
one of the conditions, the site conditions, was this ended up being the three bedroom units down here as it always was supposed to be. And all the kids are down there. So the kids were playing in the street and playing in the cul-de-sac. And that's when uh, John decided to put something off to the side of the road to keep them off the street. Yeah, and that's, and that's why on the original project, that's why we had put a play field in so they wouldn't be playing in the cul-de-sac. I wish I had the subdivision plans with me, but... Uh, so is he proposing a play area where all the asphalt is now, where that dumpster was? Is that the new proposal? Well, it was. It, that's what he thought he would do. And so he put that extra pavement there and put the, the, the basketball hoop belongs to the people in, in this unit. Well, there's two of them. So one hoop is in the parking area right. where you'd park. And yeah, right, right here, which is was supposed to be over here, but it's now here. And then the other one is further down. The other down. one's further back. They don't use the one that's further back. They use the one that's out in the parking area. Which so, wouldn't be allowed because it, it's required for parking. Which, which what? It, it was a required parking criteria for the project. Right. So the developer would know you wouldn't create a play area in parking. Well, he didn't create the play area there. The, the residents, they pulled the, they pulled the basketball hoop out to that spot. So this is, this is a managed project, though. It's a rental it managed project. So if it's a managed project, the manager would remove or require it not be in a parking area. You understand when we, when we do these projects, we figure the amount of parking spaces. Yes. And that basketball area, you, no one's parking there because they think the kids are going to play in it. Well, they do park there, actually, at, at night. There's cars there. The, the, the so color. you don't see that as a hazard? I see, I see the kids playing in the street as more of a hazard. So Which is why we did a play area. So, so is there a play area on the new plan? Well... We have this area, the paved area back here, and this is supposed to be a playing field for them. Okay, so the reason play that wasn't around. a playing field is because it was a leach field. No, you can play on the leach field. Yeah. You don't understand. I, I, guess, I guess what I'm saying is, it seems that the outlook of the developer is that when we get plans approved, we get them approved and everything's great so we can get our permits. Then as we build, we decide We'll make our own plans. We'll move this here and there, wherever we want it. And no one will be the wiser. And now suddenly, somebody wants a maintenance building. Now we have a problem, because when there's a maintenance building requested, you're going to have to go out to the site to see where the maintenance building is. And then when you go to see the site, you say, wait a second. None of these items are what was permitted. This is in violation of the permit right now. Well, that's why we're here. And I don't know why even the building department gave out occupancy permits with sidewalks removed. Well, that's not for us, the bit why the building so, department did that. I, I understand exactly where you're It's frustrating. Going. I'm worried really about fires and everything else. If you have an exhaust pipe on a gas meter, it's on it. You saw it. Did you go to the Yeah, I saw the car that was backed up there. It's not on the gas meter. Listen, what, it's what, not. Once the process goes through, we yeah, yeah, no, no, I understand. I just, I, I, I just don't think the sidewalk would have prevented that. It's not your decision. I guess I, that's I, the I point. I agree. I agree with that. It's not the applicant's decision. I agree with that. And you said it wouldn't have stopped it. Well, you're not going to park on the sidewalk into the building. How are you going to park? You're going to go up over onto the sidewalk? Who says the sidewalk's elevated? The sidewalks weren't elevated. They were just connected in front of the building. It's, there was no real detail on it. Chairman, That's okay. Can we oh, go through these uh, items yeah, looking yeah, by line and, and, and work just, them out sure. in and, order? Anything, I'm just going to make sure about anything else, Bob? I think no, no, we'll just go through the items because I'm not going to get anywhere. All right. And, um, so you want to go line by line through the items? Yes. Well, yeah. We have to because there's some safety issues and there's some that some are that, that are reasonable. 
Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, Some we have not. to identify them and work that out. Bob, you have it in front of you, if you don't mind. Okay, so number one, so the approved landscape plan, and this is again from, from the letter that was submitted, the approved landscape plan showed a mix of solid fence and arborvitae. This is along the west edge of the property. So at the, at the main entrance, when you look at your plan, that plan, this one section of the main entrance, they were supposed to do fencing and some arborvitae to make a mix because there were no buildings there and it was just supposed to aesthetically make more of a buffer than just everything flat with a fence. Mm -hmm. So that's item number one. Right. Two. Item number two, the approved plan shows a wall and stone columns at the entrance. They want to eliminate these components and leave the entrance at its present state. Again, at the original meetings, they had proposed a very nicely landscaped front entryway. It was very pleasing to the air with plantings in a stone wall and signage. I think it was even curb signage. Uh, they did install a bus shelter there now that isn't shown on the plans and they installed a different type of sign that isn't shown on the plans. So now, that's aesthetics. Yeah, I guess the structure should be on it just so we have it. Okay. I mean, there is a bus shelter installed in this. The sign isn't going to change. Okay. Uh, three, the approved plan shows dumpsters in two locations. One in front, right at the first curve, and one in the rear. They would like to substitute the dumpster for roll carts picked up curbside each week by a licensed waste contractor and eliminate the requirement of dumpster and fencing. Now, I did have a question on that one. Where you show the first dumpster coming in, I thought originally that wasn't a dumpster, that was for mailboxes. No, it's on the plan as a dumpster pad. We're proposing to put the mailbox there, a gang box, because we don't, we don't know if these mailboxes we have out there are gonna survive another winter. The way there. Okay, so so on our original plans, and I'll ask you, Noreen, just because I don't remember, was that actually a dumpster plan in that site, or did our plan say it was mailbox? I think the plans we had were for a dumpster. Okay. But that could have that could have come from in, for administrative approval. Oh, well, could have. I'm just saying it doesn't show up. Right. I, I mean, um, and they have mailboxes in front of all the houses now. So. And if they're deteriorating and it's a managed thing, that would have to come, but that would be all administrative. It could have been, yeah. Okay. Four, at the area shown on the plans where the rear dumpster pad is located, we would like to build a maintenance shed of less than 200 square feet for storage of screens, site tools, paint, and other repair and replacement and maintenance items. The shed would be approximately 16 by 12 with an overhead door and a passage door and would be designed and constructed to blend in with the existing buildings. Uh, so, the so the question on that is where the, sum, where the rear dumpster pad is shown on our plan isn't there anymore. That building has to, if, if they're storing paint too, it's got to have an MDS sheet in there. Oh yeah, no, well, all I'm saying though is where they're asking it, they're saying they would put it where the dumpster pad is. Yeah. That dumpster pad is now those parking spaces that they moved. So there is no dumpster pad that's actually parking. So if you actually plan to put a shed there, you then have to move parking spaces. Or we would put the shed where the parking spaces aren't, somewhere to the, to the left of it. But again, is that it's not on the, the plan. Of parking, parking spaces that no, you have. No, we, we wouldn't change the parking spaces that are already there. Yeah, the amounts. Right. So you would just need to show on a plan what currently exists there for parking because you've moved it, and then if you're not interfering in those spaces, you would have to show where the building is located because that means you're shifting that building next to number six, because your parking is now in the middle of the curve. It's not near building number five. It takes up the whole center. So next one. The, uh, the approved plan shows sidewalks in front of each building. We pave the driveways to the base of the stairs of each unit and feel sidewalks are not required, 
as they connect only the unit they service, whereas the parking areas accomplish the same thing. I've already said what my comment is about. Mr. Chairman, could we amend that, that item to put bumpers there to uh, eliminate the cars from getting too close to the gas? I just think I was thinking about I thought well, the same. I mean, here's where I'm at with yep. this. There's certain things that are safety aspects of this that have to be addressed and have to be documented. I don't feel like it's it's fair to the occupants of these buildings to start tearing up their lives now with some of the things. I I think we've made our point with so the I understand with the bumper from now on. I understand and in the, the bumper. Future, no, but I understand with the gas. The bumper is a good idea. The time was. How do you do it at the stairs? Because they're parking on the stairs. They're parking on the entrance to the units. The only way you get in or out. And you can't put, unless you put bumpers in front of the stairs, I just think it'll look really ugly. I don't care post. about ugly not at this point. Well, then you could, you'd have to put bumpers it, it, in front of the stairs. The safety aspects of what we have to address right now. The project's two years old. The applicant's representative has been made aware of the fact that this is not how this is done. But I don't think that. So if we wanted to propose bollards, then you would need bollards. Well, and no, I'm just saying, you would need bollards in front of the stairs and in front of the parking areas on both well, sides. I don't know how the rest, and this is in the discussion phase of this, but I don't know how the rest of you feel. I, the safety aspects are what have my attention now. Um, so item number seven, the guest parking area near the leaching field across from building one you just point out building one? Oh, there it is there. So that's that first parking area. The guest parking area near the leaching field across in building one shows several contiguous parking spaces. One would be over the pump chamber. Rather than having someone parking on the manhole cover, should we need access, we left that area unpaved where the cover is. I see nothing wrong with leaving the area unpaved and saving the cover. I just don't want to lose parking spaces. And you have seven that were submitted and by I, I'm guessing four, but don't hold me to it right now. Nick, what was the, what was the reasoning behind that? If that's an H-20 tank with an H-20 cover, why couldn't it have been paved to service that tank? Well, we just didn't think it would make sense to have somebody park. Sometimes people park their cars there for a couple of days. And if they parked on top of the cover and we needed to get to the pump chamber, we thought it just made sense I mean, to it, not park on top of it. There's not that many units there to make that notification. I mean, to lose a, a full parking space because of that, someone's obviously taken issue with. I mean, so that, that's one of the structural aspects of that plan that should have come to this board when it was there's, going there's on. No, there's no doubt you're right. A lot of these things should have come to the board. And you weren't here, I don't think. I don't think you were. No. You didn't do the original project. No, so and, and, and on okay. the original project, just so you know. You're here now. No, yeah, and you're here now. We, we, we understand. But just so you understand, on the original project, on the sidewalks, they weren't ground level. They were I, I'm not, I'm not going to just uh, make myself innocent to this thing. Right. I've been involved in this project since it was approved. And I know how this is supposed to operate. It didn't operate this way, and I'm just trying to. And with that acknowledgement, let's move. Let's try to move. So, past item this number point. eight, yeah. the approved plan indicated a sign at each side of the entryway. We installed one sign on the large area to the right side of the driveway access. I think that was all okay with the. Was that because of addressing? They had to do it because of engineering or fire department. So that's that white sign that's in front that gives the name facing the street versus sideways. Uh, the approved plan number nine shows catch basins in line with typical details showing them recessed. The basins were installed in line and are functioning as designed. Want to see that again? Yeah, it's it's the one on the cul-de-sac, right? No, it's uh, actually on the straightaway. It's it is a couple of spaces along the street where this occurs. One down near the entrance. It's actually cheaper to put them in line than it is to do radiuses, right? Yeah, I, th I think it was just laid That's out. It. Well, I'll just say, yeah. I, I said it's, it's so number I mean, that, that was the reasoning behind it. There was no, I mean, let's let's move on from the, That's why it was done. Yeah. So number 10, the basin at the cul-de-sac was not built to the size shown in the drawings. And the bottom was finished with gravel, <laughs> not grass, as shown. And the asphalt chute was not constructed. 
Attached is a letter from a design engineer who has stated, in his opinion, the revised drainage is adequate for drainage. Is there an approval on that by, by engine? Um, did they have a peer review engineer on that? So it was town engineering that approved that? Well, then, I mean, that answers your question right there. No, I don't have an issue that it doesn't meet drainage. My issue was they took it, the play area, and removed it. That's where it was. Uh, 11, the approved plan shows a six-foot cedar picket fence at the entrance. We would like not to have to install the fence, but rather install a standard post and rail in its place. I don't think that's a big issue. What was the purpose of the larger stockade fence at the entrance? Just no. privacy? I don't know. I think it was Is just it because they were building that stone wall and the signage was there? I'm not sure what the purpose was at the time, but if you if you see what the existing conditions are now, the, the neighbor cleared the whole lot and they put a swimming pool out there. So it's really probably a post and rail fence would be better. It doesn't even kind of look out of line. So shall we just go to each item and? Discuss each one, or I don't know how to Chairman. I think we need to get public comment before we have a discussion line mm. by line. That's true. Respect, I think there's a couple of people who've been waiting very patiently all night. And it is 9:30. The board's business is concluded at 9:30, so we'll need so motion, motion to go to 10. Second. All right. Motion was made by Bob to continue the board's business at 10 o'clock. Second by James. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. Um, yeah. Let's turn it over to public comment because we do see a few people out there. So public comment. Any questions, comments, or concerns, sir? Feel free to step up to the podium. Hello, Tom Pucci, 23 Jamie Lane. Um, I want to talk about number one. I believe it's number one with the changing of the arborvitaes there. Sure. Um, I, I don't have a slide. If you don't mind. Oh, we can there. pass it. Right. I, yeah. I just have to keep it to stamp it. Yeah, you don't mind it because if you do provide it to us, we need to stamp it in for the record. Yeah. So you can see here our. Uh, why what, sorry, why don't you? Show you where it is on the sure. Why, why don't you step back to the microphone so people pick you up at home? Sure. And then after you can can submit that. Okay. So here, along these areas where these arborvitaes are, would have. Sorry some... again, sir. If you could be behind the microphone so you got picked <laughs> up at home. Uh, but we understand the arborvitaes in the. Front. Yeah, you can, where you the arborvitaes to... are would have blocked the lighting that was required there are uh, like a three light posts and they are not really down but they're 365 degrees now i live at 23 jamie and it, john desangro said oh all the patios and all the people are on the first floor but it happens that the johnsons and myself have elevated decks because we have raised ranches those lights blast right into the yard. And the picture that I've taken that I'll show you looks right out my bedroom window. And if those arborvitaes were up, that would, I, I know it'll take a while for them to grow, but still, it will cover those lights eventually so they don't shine into this side of the, of the uh, neighborhood. So the current lights are shining onto your properties next door, right. correct? They're very bright. Sky. Well, that's what I'm trying to find because yeah, so I thought could, there was one. Yeah. We could request shielding for. Okay. There must have been a dark sky. Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. Else, shielding right? usually with these cool. projects, we condition dark sky compliant lighting. But if that's not the case, we could require some sort of shielding. That should be. That would be great. Adjustment, right? Mm -hmm. Is this the area you're talking about? Right. As you can see, they're kind of. When I show you this picture, these two sets of lights are that one that shows the light post and the next one farther up and those arborvitaes would cover that but i know it takes a while to grow but if you can shield them that would be lovely. so as the butter if we shielded them you don't have an issue if they don't do no. the arborvitae no um and i don't know whether this is okay to bring up or not but um you know john i he's worked very hard um but right in our area where both our decks are raised, there are absolutely no barriers between the back of these people's houses and ours. And um, again, I have a picture of this. Is there fencing? There is a fence. However, our decks are up, and Over when he fence. proposed the fence, he claimed that all the decks were on the ground level. Yeah. And 
that we're not, neither of us, neither the Johnsons or myself, so that we're face to face with these people. And if we don't put the Arbor Vitae's up there, could we possibly ask for them to be put up between our property and the people who are right across? I mean, privacy for both sets of people. Uh, I can look right into their back doors and um, it's not the best design. So if possible, if we didn't put the Arborvites there and we shaded the lights, could we possibly move the Arborvites up? Um, and I'll give you the picture of this. You know, Mr. Maroney, could you, could you make that plan smaller so maybe he could point to where his Excuse property me, is? Try and, sure. Try and zero in on where you we are talking about here. Is this the area yep. here? That's okay. it. So it's it's these two first. Uh, no, it's actually so the second two. Those those this, two. These two, right, these two right there, are right in front of 23 Jamie Lane, and I'm not sure what the Johnson's number is, but he's right next door, and we're both up on the top level because we have raised ranches. So we're looking right down into these people's windows, and there's no privacy for us or them. Um, so, if that's a possibility, that would be a great thing to move those arborvitaes over there, if possible. I don't know if this is the right forum to ask that question. Oh, but it, You're in the right spot, for sure. Um, and I want to raise my hand about the playground, too. Because although I understand what you're saying about the playground is going to be, could be farther down here, all the kids live at the other end. So that original plan where the playground was up at the top of the cul-de-sac, that's where all the children live. They're not going to come all the way down here and play because their parents can't see them. So I, I really think that playground should be back up the other side where it, where it really belongs. That's all. Sir, and if I could hold you there for a minute, I, I do have a follow-up question for you and a comment. Um, I do remember during the original hearings, there was a lot of testimony from neighbors about providing a natural buffer along where you're describing right now. Mm -hmm. Were you one of those neighbors mm -hmm. during the original hearings? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, sure, we need to stand oh, that in. Oh, I can stand we'll there, thanks. It. Thank you. Thank you. I was trying to see fine lighting, but I can't find it. Well, we can show it to the half of the board. Uh, there. Yeah. there you there go. go. All right. Yeah, I got to Yeah, James, just so Thank you. you. Thank you. All right. Is there any other public comment? Any other public comment, sir? Are you just, just here? I just wanted to listen. All right, very good. Mm. All right, so back to Welcome. the Welcome. <laughs> thanks for coming. All right, so back to the board, I guess. Well, I um, we'd have to close it and have some discussion, wouldn't we? If we have no more questions for him. So you want to? Um, do you want to discuss it just in case something comes up and we have to ask? Yeah, let's to discuss it. Again? I'll just I'll just start off. That Bob, you hit a lot of my points that I was going to bring up tonight, and uh, Scott, uh, sharing some of your concerns as well. Uh, just during this process, I just feel like it's, and we see it. Unfortunately, we see it a lot these days that uh, an applicant is just coming before the board asking for forgiveness rather than coming in and um, asking for permission along the way. And uh, Mr. Maroney, I know you mentioned that uh, in your letter at least that it was due to uh, conditions on site. I can certainly be sympathetic uh, if you come into a physical barrier or something that something needs to be adjusted, but a lot of the testimony tonight and uh, seems to be financial rather than actual physical barriers or impositions uh, on the site while while the project was being built. Um, and you probably heard us earlier hit upon health and safety. That is always my concern regarding projects, especially these larger 40B projects. I think we do have serious concerns uh, regarding the driveways. Uh, especially with the gas meters being in close proximity to the vehicles and the lack of the driveway. Um, I wasn't at the site today because I was in Boston for work, but what I did do is I'm, I'm looking at the field card, uh, which is part of the file, and you can see a town vehicle in very close proximity uh, to a house, so I can see how that can be a major concern uh, with the pavement going straight up to the house, so that definitely needs to be addressed somehow some way uh, so that's those are my comments for right now yeah go ahead Scott. Uh, that, it, again I, I would mirror the chair's um, concerns but th there were certainly uh, things in this uh, 
in this request that can be forgiven, but there are certain things that have to be adjusted. And it's, it, whether it costs you money or not, they have to be adjusted. Uh, the safety aspects of, of the gas concerns me greatly. So you have to come up with some kind of proposal that satisfies this board with respect to that, as far as I'm concerned. Um, and uh, things that were on the plan that affect Director Butters that didn't get done is a big deal for me as well. Where there were promises made to appease a Butters that don't get followed through with is, is unexcusable with this, especially with town money being I have to ask myself, if, if there wasn't money being held up, would you even be here? And, that, and, and, and forgive me for sounding facetious, but that's what it feels like to us. So the safety issues, they have to come from you, what your proposal is to, to, uh, to affect change to that. Not, it's not for us to redesign this, this process after we, the board spent the time helping you design this program that no one took consideration to ask this board for any kind of guidance. They just changed it. And I won't beat that dead horse anymore, but the safety uh, aspects to this really need to be addressed, Mr. Maroney. And, I, and, and knowing that you're coming in, you know, you're the one taking the, uh, the spanking for this, but there were decisions made that could have been addressed at the time. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. James, anything? I think the board has hit the majority of my points. The 40Bs, these are negotiations with you as the developer. And when promises are made to the neighbors, the overwhelming concern we hear time and time again is about density coming in here and people are concerned about their privacy. And when those promises are not lived up to, I agree with Mr. Zelinsky. It's very troubling. Uh, I think this is, again, another example with another 40B where people are coming in asking for forgiveness instead of getting permission. Um, I think some of these things can be fixed, but at some point, I'm, a, I'm going to be a firm no, and I'm going to start holding people's feet to the fire about these things, because it's not fair. Uh, I am a huge advocate for affordable housing. There's a crisis, and we need it, but it's not going to be licensed to ride roughshod over people's obligations. All well said. Yes, sir. Excuse me. For the record, what, what are the promises that you're, you're referring to that were made that we didn't live up to? The plan that was submitted. No, I know, but you said promises well, to we're neighbors. We're talking about uh, 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 the abutters of uh, privacy. Did, weren't there supposed to be fences that, that afforded the abutters privacy? What I've heard tonight is you don't have the number of parking spots that the permit required. Sidewalks have not been installed. I continue to go on. I mean, I, these I, are some I, significant issues. If you're just here tonight asking to, you know, for the rollout trash and to put in a storage shed to kind of keep certain things, no problem. That to me is not a big deal. I think the neighbors would most likely be, they don't necessarily want to see a snow plow. But these are significant issues that you're reducing parking without, without permission. And yes, looking, every time I've gone through there, I'm noticing cars are practically on top of the buildings. And I'm a little more concerning about this is that for some reason this summer, everyone's driving into buildings on Cape Cod. That's exactly right. It's and on Main Street. Yes, on Main Street. <laughs> when, when, we, when, we negotiate these, when we negotiate these permits, we have safety. We have a butter's privacy and, and respect in mind and all of it. You see them on every one net. I do. Uh, and everybody's, I, and I everybody's got heartache with this because it appears that they just went in and did whatever they want that was convenient for them financially, time-wise. And Bob brings up a very good point. Very little of this shows me, who's been in the business my whole life, that it was that it was uh, uh, caused by uh, um, site conditions. Yeah, site conditions. It was convenience, financial convenience. So that's why you're getting a hard time tonight. So it doesn't happen again. And I, and I understand the hard time, and. Uh, all I'm trying to do at this point, because I, everybody's made the point, I got the point. Thank you. I, I understand where we went wrong. What, what I do, would like to clarify is your comment that promises were made to abutters, because I want to be able to address that too, but I don't understand it. So when a plan is submitted and it's approved, and we're approving the plan that was presented at public hearing to with abutters. To abutters. 
Okay. Those are the All right. I, th I thought you were I talking about yeah. something specific to the abutters related right. to sure. the, the gentleman's comments about the decks and the. Well, Mr. Moroni, I, I can speak to that because I, I remember very clearly during the original hearing process a number of abutters, immediate abutters, including the one who spoke tonight, there were major issues with clear cutting that site up to the property line. And it was part of the negotiation process through mul multiple nights, multiple hearings. It was very heated. And it, it was. It was very heated. Yeah. We have a responsibility to them as well, just as much as to you and the people that and, don't even live there. And I want to honor that. I it was, just it was need very to important it. To, uh, to put in some sort of tree line there to, to provide some sort of natural buffer between the, the proposed project and the existing butters off of Jamie Lane. I remember that very clearly, and that gentleman came out again tonight to speak to that. And you can see through, the, you saw through the pictures. That's pretty clear off his deck, and you can see right into the neighborhood. And it's going to take quite some time for any sort of natural buffer. Uh, oh, just, uh, uh, I only brought up it in order to address it. I need to understand no, what I, it was. Now I, I have I, a better I, understanding. I think the point's well, well understood. All right, so everyone at this so point. real quick. So on, on number one, my opinion, the way it says approved landscape shown of the mix, and I don't mind if someone moves Arborvitae, but you're going to have you. I wouldn't be agreeable unless it was shielding on the lighting. On uh, number two, the plan shows us. Well, those line by line? Well, I just want to give you comments yeah, if you discuss. Well, right. I mean, that'll so, keep it straight for yeah. Maureen at least. And for everyone. So right. number two, it says the approved plan shows a wall and stone columns at the entrance. We would like to eliminate these components and leave the entrance at the present state. I don't see that as a big deal, but what isn't on site right now is any landscaping at the entrance. There is nothing. There is just grass, and that's what was proposed. So I would expect that the landscaping, that it be landscaped in front, because that was one, again, of the main issue with people that lived even across the street. They wanted to look at a nice entrance. So if I could interrupt for a second, if, you, if we can get to the point of the fence, and we know we can put the split rail fence there, we can put some shrubs in front of the... I wouldn't have a trouble with the fence, but what you're going to need to show in the plan, and that's what's hard seeing one of this, where is the, bu the bus shelter on that plan? Isn't it right? isn't there. So I wouldn't vote on this anyways because I don't trust these plans anymore. I'm not going to say I assume it's going to appear because nothing's appeared so far. So you would have to revise the plan, showing the bus shelter and showing the landscaping, how you now want to propose that you want to put at the bus shelter. Item three, the plan shows dumpsters in two locations, one in front of the road. We would like to substitute the dumpsters for road cart pickup by a license way and, and get rid of the, the cost of dumpsters and fencing. I don't have an issue with that, but I think you're going to have a problem because the, none of these units have storage. And you're going to see roll cans, and there is nowhere to place them except in the parking spaces. Well, they're going, people are putting them on their patios and bringing them out. But so we would need to see something that says they are required to keep those on patios behind the building because that. We don't have anything to go by. It just says, if we just say you can have roll carts, they're going to show up all over the place. And, and, and that's a I don't think that's it's a managed property, right? Yes. It's managed, but so, it's, so it's, there has to be, you have, it has to be dictated somehow. I'm going to look at it, but I think it's in the lease, if I'm not mistaken. It's, it's, according to our permit, they actually had a management company. Yes. And the management company right now isn't even telling people you can do stuff in the parking spaces. So I'm not too... Well, it just has to be pause with the management company. Um, number four. So, sorry, Bob. If I could pause just a second. So, so the roll trash that's being proposed to bring all the way to the back on on rear patios. Yeah. So what's the what's the problem with the with the dumpsters? Okay. Well, we want to use the roll carts instead of dumpsters. We have Cavosa come in every I think it's Tuesday morning. Yeah. Pick up the the. Uh, you know the pull the pull right. cards. But Mike, Mike, what's the problem with the? Is that what they're doing now? That's what we've been doing since. But this dumpsters were what were approved. <clears throat> right. So you never put the dumpsters. So it in. never happened. All, All right. So honestly, I was I was assuming the dumpsters, the dumpsters were the status quo. I. No. That's where that's where I was getting thrown off. So the reason you usually have dumpsters on these properties in these developments is because people put out cans, and unfortunately we've got raccoons and everything else to get in the cans. And that's why they use these dumpsters that are enclosed and nobody sees them. They do the dump. So personally, I'd rather see the dumpsters enclosed with fencing like they did it. I think this is, would be a nightmare with rollaway carts 
Plus, you're going to need a uh, recycling cart and everything else. Um, dumpsters actually proved to be more, attract more rodents. And, and dumpsters in one area, they're fenced in, and almost every other project that we have that has dumpsters has worked. And when you look at the ones, because you don't have any storage here. You don't have sheds. You don't have outside enclosures. You have nothing. Well, no, right now they have nothing. Right. And that, oh, we'll get to that after. Yeah. Um, then four says that the area shown on plans where the rear dumpster pad is located, we'd like to build a maintenance. Well, first of all, that plan doesn't show where the dumpster pad is because it's gone. So you're going to have to show an updated plan of what is what you're now using for parking and where you would place a dumpster pad because currently it doesn't exist. But they don't need a dumpster pad if they're going to do road. I, I'm sorry, I don't mean, I mean the maintenance shed. I'm sorry, I said no. dumpster. They want to put a maintenance shed where the dumpster pad is, and there is no dumpster pad on site. So they have to identify where the shed's going to be. They're going to have to show where it is in basis of where they have relocated the parking spaces. Okay. Because they relocate the park spaces. Um, the sidewalk is each building. Again, it's a safety issue. And I understand you can do stuff with bollards, but I just think this place should have sidewalks. I. You know, when you're doing these, these rental projects and it's an affordable rental and you finally get a nice rental to sit in, you want to enjoy it like everyone else. You don't want to have bollards and stuff stuck everywhere. Well, you want uh, to look the, like the, in a the, proper the, building. So make them put in the sidewalks. That's, in addition, you, all the kids reside in the back side of that. They've got to yeah. walk out to the bus stop in the front. No, but make them put the sidewalks in front of the, the building. The sidewalks don't go anywhere. The, si the sidewalks... You know what? They did two things, Nick, when they did the original presentation. They were aesthetic with the buildings. They made sense. And they had the safety fit feature of being a buffer. Our only pull on this whole thing right now is they have not gotten released the rest of the money the town is giving them. And that's why they need this. Because once we approve this, the town can then release the money. I think when the town looked at this, and I was on town meeting, I voted to give the money to this project. I think it's great to give money to the affordable sites. But I based it on the plans that we saw with sidewalks. And um, Listen, if it's a matter of safety, you know where I'm at. No, I know. I just, I just think they said they put in sidewalks. It's been two years. They haven't put them in. Too bad. Put them in. Side, see, see, the point, though, is the sidewalks Nick, there is no in. point. That's what we approved. And you decided, well, you didn't, but they decided not to put in what was approved. And now you're saying because we decided to do it, we can do what we want. Ken, was, Ken was on here at the time. Ken made a huge push for the sidewalks. Yeah. I mean, the neighborhood said it would be nice in front of the buildings. Is that, have to go back and just Bob, that's not what I'm saying. I, I know what you're saying. I'm just saying you're looking at it from a monetary aspect of what's there now. I'm not looking at it from a monetary aspect either. I'm looking at it as, as it relates to the sidewalks and safety. I'm saying they don't go anywhere. They connect just these two buildings. They give a buffer for the front of the units. If you're and, coming out, you can okay, set so stuff. No, wait. You can set buffer, stuff down. You're coming back that. from the store. You can put something on them while you're waiting. They're, they actually serve a purpose. Well, there is no common ground here. We need no, to I'm just so so we can identify, but so but I'm I'm long. I personally am not in favor of anything but the sidewalks on the plan. Um, six, the curbing was not installed on the sides of the parking area throughout the project. We are seeking permission not to install it as the drainage seems to be forming well. The only issue I have there, and if anybody drives down, is that if you're talking about that big yellow area in back, I am. there has to be a sign or something there because someone is going to drive right into that ditch with the stone. You yeah, always get... You're talking about the... That whole yellow... See how it says it shows like a little drainage piece going into it? Yeah. That's not little. That's like 12, 15 feet long. Yeah. And there's no it's mark. Like drainage swell. <laughs> yeah, there's no mark. I, I mean, that's easily done, isn't it? Yeah, he just has to... Put so something even a split, a small split row fence just to uh, just something on that corner so that people don't so see it. Something so people yeah. don't go over the edge. The uh, the guest parking area near the leaching field across from building one shows several contiguous spaces. That's the one at the beginning where they removed a space over the pump chamber. Right. Um, I'm with you, Scott. I don't understand why they removed it anyways, because even if a car parks there, the drainage is going under the car, and I don't think you're going to need access to it every five minutes. But either way, if they removed it, they need to show how many spaces are there now. And what was approved needs to be there. It actually, what is actually on site. And based upon your observations, It Bob, needs to be demarcated. They need to have some kind of a line on them that shows this is a 
that's how you park so someone just doesn't there's already proven parking issues on site based upon your observations yeah and I've got photos I can put in the file yep. and that was part of the original plan that it was it was, it was supposed to be painted right I have to go through the whole file. Well, but they were supposed to be, yeah, they were supposed to be. They require that right now if it wasn't on the original. Well, they're right. asking for a change. I mean, I'd have to go through the plan. I assume we had them demarcated. Well, it shows it there. That shows it on the plan. It just doesn't show it in person. So if they show it on the plan, they would demarcate them. The approved plan indicated a sign at each of the entryways. We installed one sign. I don't think that's an issue at all. No. The sign is there. So eight should be free and clear. The approved plan shows catch basins in line with the typical detail, the recessed, I think, along the route. You said that's fine, so I, I have no issues see with, that. Issue with that. Actually, if they put sidewalk there, it will help that out. It would. The approved plan shows catch basins in line. Oh, that's it. Uh, the basin at the cul-de-sac was not built to size shown. So that's that yellow section right at the end of the cul-de-sac. Swale. So basically, I have no problem as long as it's handling the drainage. I just want something there to demarcate that you a fence or something in front of it. Split yeah, rail split or something. Rail, that would work. 11, the plans approved show a six foot cedar pick, picket fence at the entrance. We would like not to have to install the fence, but rather install a standard post and rail. I don't think that's an issue, a post and rail fence versus, it's an entrance that's not blocking anyone, it's the main road. Agreed. Where does Dark Sky, uh, that issue with the lighting Dark fall in? Well, they, they, they did a lighting plan. Is that on number one? No, it's on the uh, I could pull that up. I just, I don't have the lighting plan in the file, but they no, gave no, a lighting. The entrance that the abutter was complaining about. But all of our things say you can't let it spill over into other properties, so. Right. Yeah, I think they can probably just put in some shielding. Some shielding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. if it's shielded. It's, it. yeah. it's a typical condition we do for these 40Bs. Right. And I'm, I'd have to scroll through and, and find it specifically. That's got to be mine. That needs to be addressed. What it, yeah, what isn't on the plan that I want to see is where is the play area that they removed? Where, what's the location going to be? The play area that we removed? The, on the plan that you, it's in the office, you can look at it. Yeah. That drainage area that you've created used to be all grass. Now it goes low and it's stone on the bottom. On the original plans, that was shown as a play area. You're saying on the approved 40B plans? Yes. That was a play area. So they did the drainage there, which is fine. And I think what he's done is tried to create something across the other side. But that's not in any plan. So I what agree. is the play area? Where is it located? What's it going to look like? I don't think the board assumed it was going to be an asphalt square. But whatever he's proposing has to show somewhere. We'll do that. But I, I, I just want to, for the record, that, that the approved plans showed the detention pond over there. We'll have the to resolve area. that at the next, where you Yeah, because they, they were going to put the play area out front, and they couldn't because it was a leach field or something, and they didn't want to do it out there, so they moved it on the other side. So, so if the play area has moved essentially across the development, would it make sense to put the maintenance shed in a different location if the kids are going to be playing in that area? Well, there's only two places we identified we could put it. One was back there, and the other was where this dumpster pad was down here. We didn't think it would look good coming in the entrance having a maintenance building there. What it's done is it's moved the play area closer to the main road, what they did. No, the play area is actually, um, can you move that up? Yeah. If he's talking about them going on top of the septic. No, we couldn't do that because it was a leech thing. Well, that's what I'm saying, but that's what his testimony was. They wanted, that was going to be the new play Yeah, area. and it wasn't. That's so the play area the currently exists is behind B. Actually, none of those trees exist, but that area there. Right there. It's okay. against the fence. And the other thing, it's a, I mean, it's something to think about. I mean, when I think about play area, I don't think about a giant 10 by 26 asphalt square. Right. Oh. But. There's certainly some work to do on the plan. So are we looking for a continuous, Mr. Chair? We are, and I'll, I'll just jump, Mr. Maroney, real quick, because I, I did find it, page 10 of the original condition, uh, of the original decision, condition 16, lighting shall be installed in accordance with the reference plans and deflectors added yeah. to fixtures to direct lighting downward onto development and not onto adjacent properties. So there it is. Uh, but looks like we are looking at a continuance here, given that it's almost 10 o'clock. And, and he can give the new plans of the changes. Right. 
So, uh, and can questions be asked and answered through through our administrator to help him define exactly what we're doing? So he doesn't come back with. Oh, he can always ask the minister. Well, I'm just saying. Yeah, he can uh, always uh, reach out to Is the board in the general consensus that if he yes. works through this to get to, that the next time they come, we can have some kind of resolution at least? Yeah, I think that's a kind of a given. Anyway. I hope so. Well, is it? <laughs> I, I've made some pretty good notes yes. too, so I well, think. No, I think but it, it gives you an opportunity, Nick, to, to yeah. refine what. I appreciate. A that. lot got thrown at you tonight. In the meantime. And I know it says nothing to do with the permit. Can you please contact the management company and have them speak to every one of those tenants to not park against the building or the gas meters? Keep the cars actually in the parking space and not in the front entrances because if there's a fire and someone has to get out, you're not getting out with the cars sitting in front of the front entrances. So have the management company There's just make sure that everybody parks that, like that. that in the meantime. It happens to be the handicapped building. I know it did. I just didn't. <laughs> and that woman exiting because she doesn't. I'm sure she doesn't her. know. Looking yeah. for a motion, Mr. Chairman. We need a date. Uh, Noreen, do, what do we have? October. I'll, just, I'll, I'll go to you for that. I think it's October. <laughs> the 7th or the 7th? Oh, boy. Is October 7 okay? October 7th it is. Yes. And maybe we can discuss in between and get things squared away. Can I, can I ask a question, too? If that's the case, he's got some notes. And with clarica clarification from you, can some of this be started before the next meeting? What do you mean? Some of, the, some of what we're asking yeah, for. Some of the work done. So when the next time they come, they, they could have some resolution to it. And you wouldn't have to wait. To get some of these things fixed, you know what I'm saying? So is do it, we is that have appropriate? to, because we voted it was substantial, do we have to just do a vote tonight on what items you could do administratively, or how does that work? I just saw it so you can do it, you know what I mean? Yeah. I just don't know where we voted it. Can, can, can we vote to make it administratively with conditions? Well, so I we can I, do it the way we Well, some it. of the items I don't mind. You know, the, the lighting I wouldn't mind. I don't understand. But it the gets landscaping, I wouldn't mind. We don't identify them succinctly. Um, we have to vote on the sidewalks to see how that goes. <laughs> but I'd rather have him start that now. So he's he's going to work with you to get a plan together and show what actually exists, whatever it is, and then and then with the improvements that we asked for, so we can vote on that, correct? So right. you're looking for a motion to uh, continue to October what? Seventh. Seventh. October 7th. I'll make that motion. Second. second. All right, motion to continue this hearing to October 7th, made by Scott, second by James. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Thank, <coughs> thank you, and sorry. Uh, Bye, Nick. Good night, Mr. Roy. Oh. Thank you. All right, we do have our open meeting agenda items, voting the minutes from July 8th and July 29th. Uh, tabling the 29th. Tabling the 29th. Yeah. Uh, Okay. Very good. All right. July, ah. July 28th. Anyone want to make a motion? July 8th. July 8th. I'm sorry. July 8th. I'll move to approve the minutes of July I'll 8th. I'll second Mr. Morse's uh, motion. Approving the minutes of July 8th, made by James, second by Scott. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Okay. So I will make a move to go beyond 10 to 10.05. <laughs> I'll second it. All right, going to 10.05, made by Bob, second by Scott. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Going to 10.05, it is. All right, uh, board updates, is there anything? Um, uh, I will say, well, do you have anything? Yeah, you go first. All right. I'll figure out what's... Uh, it's Ed Van Curen's birthday, is it not? All right, so, um, you know, Ed is uh, probably watching at home, so happy birthday, Ed. Happy birthday, happy birthday, birthday Ed. Happy birthday. Hope to have a cold one with you soon. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Got that out of the way. Happy birthday, Ed. Uh, bylaw recodification is still oh. underway. Um, I can't go. It's, it's in the day. They're only in the day. They wouldn't agree to do them after five. Uh, We're resuming. But I, but I'm working. I mean, I don't understand why they did it anyways. That's why everyone had to drop off. They, they would... They agreed only to do it during the day. Mm. How convenient. Okay, so I have one, and I don't even, I don't even know how to handle this or not. But um, so, so the, so the selectmen's new appointment date is what the thirtieth. Uh, 
uh, yes. And there's, I believe, three applicants. Three applicants have Two positions. applied. Um, I didn't know how to. Type. I have some cons. No, I'm very easy. I, I have I have some maybe questions or concerns, and I don't know. I don't know. I, I, there's issues we have in files from the past that may concern applicants, and I don't think the selectmen may be aware of them. And I just think that to properly review an application, if anyone has a significant concern, that those concerns should be made to the board as a whole, the select board. And it has nothing to do with what their decision is and it's up to them anyways. I'm just troubled by some possible legality issues and I don't know if that's something that an individual board member can just bring up with the information, or is it something you would, would discuss with the board as a whole and say, these are my concerns, are there any? Or I would recommend talking to the town council. It would certainly be in the purview yeah. of the chair to talk so to the So maybe the chair could talk to I mean, town council, board. and I, I, can, I, mean, I can give the chair later concerns I have yeah no it, it, I think it's appropriate if you want me to reach out to town council I can definitely have that discussion because I'm, I'm understanding what you're saying so. and there certainly has to be some uh, legal navigation before that yeah and I don't want to cause issue, you know specific issues with people I just uh, it's, it's bothering uh, me at this point and I just don't well, know how I'm, to handle I'm it I'm sharing your concern Bob 100% absolutely so if you want me to reach out to town council I can have yeah reach out to town council and I can go over the stuff that's all in the public files and how, what how it's appropriate to proceed from or if it's appropriate whatever right, they right, feel right. is you know or does would you just make a letter as an individual of the community versus versus as coming from the chair as <clears throat> yeah it's all public information right. anyways it's nothing all right it's 1004 oh video yep happy Board. birthday yet again anything <laughs> no 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 and anything else future agenda items no. anything all right so Before the girls freeze to death over right there. All right, so our next scheduled public hearing is September 9th, 6.30 here at Town Hall. See everyone then. Meeting adjourned.